Eight-ish. Happy birthday. Already? To you. I said happy birthday to you. Scene. And scene. It's Tuesday night. It's Tuesday time, time for another edition <laughs> of WZR TV Tuesdays. Matt Boone, hey. who's turning the big 3 0 tomorrow. Tomorrow. Big 3 0, man. I'm this an old is, man. Do uh, I look older? You've got uh, four more, less than four hours in your 20s. This is, uh, that's it, man. That's it. <coughs> you spent 10 years in your 20s, and now you're about to spend 10 years in your 30s, and uh, this is, that's, that's it. I'm that's an old man. Kind of, it's kind of a big deal, though. I mean, you get to that teenager stage. Yep. And then you go into your 20s, and then when you hit the 30s, you start thinking, you know, I'm getting a little bit old, you know? It's funny, too, because I, I, I hit 40. I relate back to uh, when I was, because my mom had me when she was 16, so she was young. And I remember when she was 30, I felt like she was the oldest person in the world. Yeah. You know, I was, right. Yeah, if she was 16, I would have been 14 when she was 30. Okay, yeah. She, so, said and I'm 16? 14, I'm looking at my mom thinking she's like an old woman. Right. And right. now I'm 30. I know. And I still feel like a 10-year-old, basically. I, I, don't, I don't be, feel old. I mean, I was 25, and I used to look at Dan, who was like 31 back in the day, and I'm like, damn, you're 31? And right. like, yeah, Same man. old. And then you get there, and you're like, mm-hmm. nah, it's I'm not that old. I'm still feel. I still myself, feel like right? me, yeah. But, uh... Know. It's one of the big ones, though. I mean, the 20s, the 30s, the 40s, the 50s. You go into a new... I guess. Uh, uh, I really haven't put any thought into it. I keep forgetting yeah. my birthday is tomorrow. You, no, it's tomorrow. We're you gonna are the one who reminded me of all the tonight. fucking tweets and birthday bash and boom yeah. bash. And I'm yeah. like, oh, that's right. I'm... But tomorrow. I know it's your birthday and everything. And let me get to the more important news. The we more got tornado news. warnings out right now. Oh, tornado warnings. Steve Caparizzo was just on the uh, news. He broke in. That's how serious this is right now. That Steve Caparizzo interrupted ABC programming and broke in with a live alert that says tornado warnings. There is a hook echo on one of the storms out Not in Delaware. A hook, echo. a hook echo. You don't say a hook on echo. On one of the storms out oh, in Delaware well, I County. I didn't know he had a hook echo. Now the last know. thing I did Let's was check it. the radar before. We walked in here to do a I know. live WZR TV broadcast. Now, in addition to that, you didn't know I did this. I got the radar right here, oh, Christ. which we can pull up during the live show, and you'll notice the line of storms mm-hmm. right here should be here, I would say, in about another hour, hour and a half. So when we go to the break at about 9 o'clock, mm-hmm. the line of storms, the cold front moving through, the line of storms is going to be awfully close to uh, to Albany. So I'd say give it about an hour, hour and a half. At some point, when we are live here tonight, we're going to open them windows, then we're going to watch a live thunderstorm right here, live, oh baby, God. live! I said live, baby, okay. live! My right question here. to you is, when are you going to get it through your dumbass <coughs> brain? Yeah. But just because you're a weather fanatic, mm-hmm. that our international internet show, the people watching don't give a shit about our local oh, upstate love New York love weather. It. You love it. They love it. Fucking guy. They love it. I hear from them on Facebook all the time. They love it. Yeah. They tell me how much I should give more weather reports, and, okay. and they, they, they eat it up. They want more of it. I get a lot of comments. Legitimately saying, I'm joking. they all tell me shut, shut the up. fuck yeah. up. <laughs> Everybody on my face, but shut the fuck right, up. Nobody have, cares about the weather. You, you do have two or three people that are from the around about area, from the Albany area, and they love right. it. They're like, right. no, 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 keep it going. I love the update. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, but a tornado warning's no joke, and that's what we have out right now. The difference I was telling you before Although we came I've, live. Since growing up, I think I've seen <coughs> fifty tornado warnings, and never once have I seen a tornado. So all the warnings don't mean jack shit to me. You may not make the 30. Tonight may be the night okay. where you see a, uh, a tornado and that ends our lives. You know? Now our lights could happen go off. tonight yeah. when we are live on air. The power could go out. We could lose power. That, that would, would make suck. for a... Uh, yeah. Well, that would make for nothing. We'd be off the yeah, air. Yeah, we'd be off the air and sitting here in the dark. And we wouldn't be able to come back on the air. Yeah, yeah. So once anyways. we get cut off, we're off. So uh, anyways, we uh, there were no pay-per-views. I mean, there was uh, UFC... This uh, this past two UFC, two UFCs, yeah. right? One was pay per view. 
on, uh, on Saturday night, which uh, I watched, you watched. Uh, you're doing play-by-play now for eFightNews.com. EFightNews.com. Right, and, uh, you know, so you've got to do the play-by-play for Frank and that website. Uh, I was in there watching, you know, by myself in there, drinking some beers, but uh, it was a decent show. Uh, no, 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 the one on Saturday night was a good show. I'm trying to remember. The yeah, one I'm on confusing the two. The no, one Sunday on Sunday. Sunday night was uh, BJ Penn in the main event. Yeah, and the two finales were real quick. The two quick finales, so, right. So you they can't were, say that was bad. And right. I, I didn't the other one was uh, Machida and Weidman, which was, man, Great I'll fight. tell you what. Yeah, they're talking about that as fight of the year so far. I, I had Weidman up. I think, uh, I think I had him up. Who... Somebody won the second round. Was it Machita that took the second? I had no. Weidman one, Weidman one two three. Yeah, exactly. I, I think I had Weidman one two four. Machita took. It was close in the third, no. and the fifth was all uh, Machita. It was one two three Weidman, and in the yeah. fifth you might be able to give. A lot of people gave the fifth to Weidman. I scored a three two one two three for Weidman, four and five for Machita. Four Machita, was right. where Machita almost knocked him out. Okay, it came real That's close. In the fifth, at the very end. Mm. Machida had Wyman up against Cage and was lighting his fucking world on fire. Right, right, right. But Wyman won most of that round, had a takedown, so a lot of people scored the fifth mm. uh, for Wyman, which wouldn't have mattered because it would have been three to two even well, if he gave it to Machida like I did. And they said that Wyman's never gone the full five rounds. Well, he's never um, been in a, yeah, he's only been in two five round fights, both right. the silver fights, and they both ended what the first one in the first round, second one in the second round. And Wyman was gassed. I mean, going into the, I think it was the fourth round, fourth and, and definitely the fifth round. Uh, Wyman was gassed. I mean, he was still throwing punches, but you could. Tell he was tired. He was he was yeah. tired. I don't want to say he was gassed because that sounds like he had nothing left. He was that's, tired. That's not the case. But yeah, he was definitely uh, tired, and I got nervous. You know, <laughs> I knew that going into the fifth, that Machida would have probably needed a 10-8 round or a knockout or a submission. Ten-eight would have just made a draw. Two. Well, I, th- right. I think one of the, the judges actually had a wacky scorecard, so maybe not. You right. never know with the fucking judges. No, but uh, no. by so stand, it should have been three-two. 4-1, and then the 10-8 round would have been at best a draw. What do you think of Weidman? I mean, the real deal. He's the real deal. He's the real deal, I had deal, picked right? Machida. I lost money to you. I lost money to Shalik, my boss. $20 one of in my, my pocket. Right. Yeah. Right. I'm not on roll lately. i got to tell you guys, yeah. with WWE pay-per-views, UFC, I'm kind of... That was the only fight I bet on, because I really yeah. thought Machida was going to... I thought he was going to surprise everybody. I thought yeah. people were putting too much into Weidman because he had beat Silva twice. Right, right. Uh, and if you look at how he beat him... Mm. The finishes were bullshit, but he kicked all his ass in both fights. Yeah. It wasn't like, oh, we got lucky, he broke his leg. Oh, we got lucky, right. he hit him when he was climbing around. He was kicking his ass before both he was, he was beating finishes up on happened. Him. Right, right. So he's exactly. the real deal, but I just thought Machida's style. And Machida at 185, mm. undefeated at 185, mm. fucking shredded. Yeah. And yeah. he's just been a killer at 185. So I thought, I didn't think you know, why we could hang with him. The, the problem I have with Machida, and it seems like time and time again, it's the same old Machida where he waits for his opponent to come in yeah. and attack him. And that, at times, is going to make for a boring fight as some guys have the same style where, listen, I wait for you to come in, you wait for me to come in, and we're both just going to dance around Staring the cage. Contest, yeah. Machida dances around the cage a lot. He was where aggressive kind of on like, Saturday, though. Not in the first couple of rounds. No, no, he was normal Machida the first few rounds. But, yeah. saying that, that's why I picked Machida, because Styles make fights, and Machida gobbles up wrestlers. A. Right. B, anybody who's really aggressive because, like you said, he likes to stand back, circle, and wait for you to come in and catch you. Right. Ryan Bader's the best example. Bader comes charging in, and Machida just steps back and drops him, mm-hmm. knocks him out. Mm-hmm. So I thought between the fact that he eats up wrestlers for breakfast and that he's really good against guys that are aggressive that come forward, Machida's a wrestler. Machida, or Machida, Weidman's aggressive. Weidman comes forward. He's a wrestler. Right. I thought Machida would, you know, but he didn't. You know? Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, right. to Weidman's t- testament, though, he's a tough son of a bitch because Machida was really fucking him up in that fourth round. Yeah, I mean, yeah. real bad. Now, who is it? It's uh, Weidman and, and Vito. Are they going with? Isn't is there's no the decision next? yet? But uh, that's the next logical uh, opponent. But Vitor's got to get his license, uh, and that's going to be. Right, a process, and then Chael week. with uh, God. I mean, we didn't talk about it last week, but another failed drug test we about a couple that. of weeks ago for uh, Chael. It came in at a a, a low fifty. Uh, fifty for was his testosterone level, but uh, what that means is, when, I was telling you once that when you start taking TRT or steroids, whatever mm-hmm. TRT, when you start taking TRT. Your body generates its own testosterone, a certain amount. Okay. When you start doing testosterone replacement therapy, you're injecting testosterone directly into your body, so your body stops producing it on its own. Right, right, right. 
if his number's 50, that means for his career, he's been putting so much shit so much in, that in his right, body that right. when it's not in there, his natural level is so ungodly low. Right, right. That it explains that. So that tells basically you. Basically tells you he's been fucking taking he's shit. He's been going crazy. He's been taking all, because Victor Belfort, who everybody, he's the fucking poster boy for TRT and steroids and all that shit. Yeah. His levels were like a 141. Oh, really? His son was like 50. Wow. So it was like three wow. times lower than Belfort, who's right. supposedly the fucking juiced up monster of all monsters. So over the last ten Basically years. Basically what it means is Chell Sun has been hardcore, hardcore cheating. Hardcore steroids and he's shit. He's been cheating his ass years. off. Like right, as much right. as you could possibly cheat, wow. he's been cheating. Wow. Which is kind of, I mean, it That's makes sense crazy, to people who don't man. really know Sonnen or, or casual fans. Yeah. If you really know Sonnen, he really comes off if you know him. Kind of like Howard Stern. If you're not a Howard Stern fan, you just assume he talks about porn and naked chicks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he's yeah. really like a brilliant fucking right, entertainer right. and Real a great interviewer. Right, right, right. But if you don't know him, then you have this perception of him. Yeah. The perception Sonnen has with people who don't know him is a guy that talks shit. He talks big shit, mouth. Exactly. He's a heel. Right, right. If you really know him, he seems like the most honest fucking guy in the world. Yeah, but he hasn't been honest. He hasn't been honest not when it comes to competition. Right, right. No, he's been wow. fucking cheating some bitch. It makes it even all the worse that he's been, you know, that roided up and taking that much, uh, that yeah, much Yeah, and it takes shit. away from so much of his career. You look right. at guys that he's beaten, yeah. you're like, well, fuck, no wonder he beat him. He was yeah. juiced to the gore. Yeah. You know? Well, it's the same thing with Barry Bonds and everybody else oh, in yeah. baseball hitting all home runs. Not the same, right. because in MMA, you're hitting someone. You're hurting right. That's true. That's if true. you're that freaked up on juice and shit, you could be killing people or yeah, really yeah. damaging them, giving them brain damage. But Chell never had the look that he was juiced up. really, no. I mean, he was a big boy and everything. I mean, he yeah. was 220, 230, whatever, walking yeah. around weight. So he's a big fucker that cut down. Right. But still, yeah, he didn't have the shredded, you know, physique like you said and anything yeah. like that. But. Well, anyways, um, hey, you know, uh, getting into uh, pro wrestling news, which is what we're here to talk about, right? UFC That's the most wrestling, we've right? talked about UFC in a um, long time. The WWE Network. Before we Network. switch off real quick, BJ Penn. Yeah. Sad, uh, sad performance. You know, I was so depressed watching dude, that. Dude, it's like, uh, I don't know. He should have stayed in retirement. I just compared UFC to, to baseball. I guess I'm going to compare uh, UFC now to, to, to the NFL. And BJ reminds me of Brett Favre. Brett Favre. I hate Great people that, you know, it's time to go. When you retire, hang it up. Be done. But then they come back. And they come back again. Ken Shamrock is another example. They come back and they keep taking these fights. And then they, they, they get their ass whooped. Oh. So coming out of the fight, you look back on their legacy, but people are going to remember. I mean, I understand people are going to remember how great of a uh, fighter Ken Shamrock and BJ Penn were back in the day. Yeah. But they're also going to remember at the end of their career... They came back well, and they stuck along to they stuck around with Shamrock you're going to remember the fact that he stuck around too long and like cuz I mean he's he, still going he had a whole second career of just getting fucking annihilated right you know what i mean right. so that's how he ruined his legacy Penn yeah. really only came back one or two times too many mm-hmm. and the thing with fighters more than football players are things like Muhammad Ali's a good example Muhammad Ali would pull off these shocking upsets that you mm-hmm. would never expect Right, and when you retire and you you say I'm going to come back, <laughs> they have it in their head that hey, listen, nobody thought I could beat George Foreman in Zaire. Mm-hmm. Nobody thought I could you know beat Joe Frazier in the rematch, or nobody thought I could beat Ken Norton in the rematch, or whatever. He would defy the odds so many times that when everybody's telling him no, it's you're done, stay retired. In his head, he's like, yeah, but you said that with Foreman, you said right. that with no, I can do it again. Right. You don't know right. what it's right. in my head and in my heart. Penn was the same way. That guy did some amazing shit. Right. I mean, right, he, right. the only guy other than Randy Couture to win two belts mm-hmm. in two different weight classes in, in, in UFC history. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dan Henderson did it in Pride, but BJ Penn was all, one of only two guys in UFC history with Randy Couture to do that. And then he would he fought Leota Machida once. BJ I know. Penn at yeah. heavyweight. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, and, and he was competitive. Right. And right. you know what I mean. So you, you got to think if you're BJ Penn, he's got to believe. Well, Frankie Edgar's not a big guy. I mean, BJ Penn fought Roy yeah, McDonald. Frankie Edgar is a, a, a bad mother of a fighter, fighter, dude. You know, but he fought Roy McDonald, who's a big one seventy guy. Yeah, and you know he wasn't competitive. He got his ass kicked, but he yeah. didn't. You know, 
against Frank Yeager, who's 145. I mean, that's 25, oh, 35 yeah, yeah, yeah. pounds lighter. Right. So he's thinking in his He's head, thinking, well, I might lose, I but I'm not going to get the shit kicked out of me yet. Right. And he got the shit kicked he out of him. He got the shit kicked out of him, man. Big, they, uh, nasty cuss. Stopped in the uh, in the third round. He, I mean, he made it to the third round. So that, that, uh, Unless yeah. I'm mistaken, that's the only time he's quit on the stool against GSP. We were there for that one. He didn't quit, though. We were there for the one in GSP, too, where he quit on the stool or his yeah, right. partner quit for him. Uh, and I think McDonald, uh, the ref stopped it or something. But this was the uh, the only time I can remember like, between rounds. The ref stopped it, I think. Right, right. Or he went all the way. I think he might have went all the way. But uh, I, this is the only time I can remember Penn being stopped. Yeah, yeah. like yeah, you, yeah, you know, they're hitting, hitting, hitting. Oh, the ref stopped. Well, like, I can't saying. ever yeah, remember the, ref, the time. Ref jumped in and, and Matt Hughes did it to him once. Oh yeah, had him yeah. trapped and was elbowing. But other than that, I don't think Penn's ever been stopped yeah. in a fight like that. It was sad to see, man. I mean, I know you watched it the following <coughs> day, but yeah. I stayed up, man. And it was just, it was, I don't know. I mean, it was a bloody mess at the end. And thank God, even in the uh, in the post fight interview, uh, he has said, you know, that's this is it. I should, yeah. I shouldn't have come back. And Dana, Dana said as well, you know. That even going into the fight, if BJ had lost, he was going to try to talk BJ into retiring. Well, going into the fight, any talking to do. No, I going mean, into the fight, Dana said he's if he loses, I'm going to tell him to retire. Penn said if he wins, he's probably going to retire. He just yeah, wanted to come he back. Wanted one more. He See, said why, at, the, at the press why? conference. He, he said in the press conference, I just had I would if I didn't come back now where I'm still somewhat young enough. He's only 35, 30, yeah. whatever. Right. Uh, if I didn't come back now where I'm young enough, I'm healthy enough, I'm athletic enough still. And try and fight Edgar, you know, a smaller guy. Yeah. I would have wanted for the rest of my life. Could That's I have? Right, right. At least now I know, and I can right. retire knowing, it'll, you know, and not being like yeah. the rest of my life. What if? What if I, I'm I sure tried. there's a lot of guys that BJ's still thinking. What if? Can I take this guy? Can you I never take know. this guy? This yeah. guy? This guy? And not only that, but a couple of people in the chat room just brought up money talks. Man, fighters get old, Penn's and they, if they guy. don't, is Penn a rich His guy? His family's right? rich as shit. Right. Uh, UFC went into a business with them in Hawaii. They let him co-promote a official UFC gym in mm-hmm. Hawaii. So he mm-hmm. banks off of that. You know, not only Prince that... Family, he's made tons of bread fighting over the years. He's got so. the website, bjpen.com, and he's basically turned that into an MMA UFC dirt sheet, like I guess, news if site. you will, like a news yeah. website, which covers all sorts of fights. It's not like BJ like Penn's official hey. homepage. It's like an MMA Ooh, right. news It's got site. all news and rumors and upcoming fights. Like E-Fight like News. Like Dog and E-Fight News, all, the, yeah. all those websites. Right. Um... One last thing I wanted to talk about is uh, there was a little, uh, some of you guys may have That's seen right. it, as it appeared on the, uh, oh, preseason. Yeah, yeah. Very soon. Um, real quick, man, um, you may have seen it on the pay-per-view. Joe Rogan and Dana White were spotted. Oh. Je- they were spotted on the pay-per-view, and the cameras, if you looked in the background, they were like face-to-face jawing with each other. Uh, Joe Rogan basically got in the ring. He was in there with Ronda Rousey uh, after, after her fight. We, we didn't talk about that yet. Rousey beat Alexis Davis Rousey in 16 seconds. 16 seconds. Second fast. Alexis UFC Davis. Title defense Alexis history. Davis, when she came out, she looked like somebody that didn't know how to... I've never seen her fight, so I don't want to dog her too She's much. undefeated in the UFC. 3-0. I know, I know. That's the thing. But right? she pretty much lost her last fight against Jess Guy. Yeah. And, uh, you know, she's not particularly good at anything. But uh, after it was over, I mean, it was such a quick fight, 16 seconds. It was Joe a Rogan. fight. She hit the officer, punch, 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 yeah. stop. Joe Ro- I punch, 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 square in the face. Right in the face. Man, yeah. yeah, and she couldn't block um, it. You know? But uh, Joe Rogan said, I'm getting word from the production truck that, yeah. do you want to fight next month or in September? August, September? Uh, whenever it is, Thing, yeah. Whenever. I think it's next month, like but, uh, four weeks from now, I Well, Dana White freaked out and uh, went up to Joe Rogan during the event. Um, there's a video online where you can see him jawing in between fights when they were airing a video package or something like that. It's like a fan sent in type video. I don't know if you I guys have see seen it, it on no. uh, YouTube. But in between the fights where they air the video packages and mm. things like that, uh, they're going back and forth. And Dana is just, you can tell he's irate. And Joe Rogan's yelling back at him like, yo, dude. That's what they told <laughs> they me. They told yeah. me to say it. After the so, show. Uh, the, after the show, you go okay, ahead. Yeah, after the show, the whole, I don't know if you knew that. After the show, the whole talk from Dana was it wasn't Joe's fault. It wasn't Joe's Some fault. Some fucking right. retard in the production truck took it upon himself, which I find very hard to believe. Yeah, who, uh, does that what guy still have his job? I, I, I don't know. I, yeah, I keep yeah, thinking yeah. it's Craig Politian, who's like Dana's boy. Yeah. So he wouldn't, but I can't think that some random production executive on his own accord would say, yeah. hey, Joe, go ask her if she'll fight in a month. Right. Without right. having some kind of approval. And and then the the reaction that Rousey gave well, was they put basically, on the spot. It was unfair. They put on the spot, but the reaction she gave was basically, uh, no, I need surgery. Yeah, like, so, yeah, I'm fucked. 
Uh, yeah. And then it may have went through Dana's head. <coughs> oh, fuck, I didn't know she needed surgery no, or whatever. Knows, now I got to Oh, did yeah, he, he knew? knew. So who said it then? I don't know. That's what makes it dumber. I have no clue how that happened. But it, there's that no beef. very weird. There's no beef between Dana White and Joe Rogan, as some no. have, have said. Uh, Joe Rogan's in the clear. came from the production truck. The guy in the production truck, whoever that guy was, I'm guessing probably doesn't have a job or <laughs> has been demoted. I don't or know. Or got a I Dana don't. White reaming. Or a reaming yeah. from Dana White, right. All right, so here we go. Here we go. Let's get into uh, pro wrestling here. By the way, one last thing. Uh, and this is with uh, the WWE Network. They've been plugging, starting yesterday, even on Raw last night, they plugged it over and yeah. over and over. A free WWE Network trial for the entire week. So if yes. you guys haven't gotten the network um, and you want to see what it's all about, normally they tell you you've got to enter a credit card number, this, that, and the other thing. And then if you don't cancel it, they bill your credit card and they, they kind of con you into it, right? I'm telling you, I did it today. I went to WWE.com. The top story says free network. It asked me for my first name, my last name, a password, email. And, and an email. That was it. That was it. I entered. It was like four lines, four or five lines of things. It literally takes I 10 seconds. I entered it. I hit the, the, the enter button. Boom. Start playing. Right there was the WWE network. So And, and you told me to do it. Uh, so if you've never been able to try out the network, they are not playing around. When they yeah, tell no you, no credit card needed. And that's what everybody, like you said, normally when it's a free whatever trial, nobody wants. To. Yeah, have to put your credit card in. Yeah. They don't bill you immediately. You get your free week, but you right. cannot get access without putting a valid, active credit card. In. Exactly. This exactly. you don't need. It just you'll try it out. I'm telling you that all you got to do is put your email and your first and last name in there. You are good to go. And the network loads. It popped right up. I said, holy Pops shit. Right man. up. Now with so, me, it wouldn't encourage me to subscribe because uh, that's obviously the goal. Like, you know, make it very easy like we just described. Right, People right. can just get right on and check it out. And then they'll be enticed uh, when their week's up to, oh, shit, I want to sign up because I don't want to not have it I didn't anymore. get to see this or I didn't get this and, and, and that. But I'm looking and through it and they don't really have anything on there. I mean, I'm talking about original programming. If you want to watch an old fucking Raw from seven years ago, you can do that. Mm -hmm. you want to watch any pay-per-view, you can do that. But that's just old events. And they had total divas. I'm talking about original programming. Right, like brand new right. content. They got Countdown, mm -hmm. Rewind, right, and that's it. That's pretty much it. They yeah. put their DVD documentaries on, but I've got all those already. They put old TV shows on, which I've seen a million times. I don't care to see again. The only stuff I want to watch is original content, and and you know what I've seen makes, all you know what makes it even worse is WWE tough enough. The filming I was really looking forward to that. The filming was supposed to begin this week. Last uh, week, I think. This past week, yeah, right. Uh, WWE Legends House. They delayed the filming on that. There for might a not even be season. a season two. I've heard. That, yeah. So so listen, if they're cutting back with all the budget cuts and everything else, right? You want people to sign up for the network, but yet. You're going to cut back on original content such as Tough Enough and Legends House? That's why people are signing up to watch Tough Enough, yeah. to watch Legends House. Not for the older... I mean, yeah, granted, a lot of people are signing up to watch older matches and things like that. But they want new content. They want they reality want shows. original programming. Reality shows, whether you, you, you love them or hate them... Reality shows draw ratings. Look at the Kardashians, man. Any of the reality shows, the the Real Hot Housewives and and the Jersey Shore when it was on, oh, yeah. they drew huge numbers. I people, hate reality TV, but people love people it. People love yeah. reality TV. I mean, I man. can't fucking stand it, but people love it. People love it, yeah. man. And and it's all scripted. It's not reality. No, you know what it's I mean. Like Springer, you think those people really? Yeah, come, come on. on, come on. But um, but anyway, so if you want to check out the WWE Network, now's the, the time to do it. It was so easy. I was surprised when I went in there. They didn't ask me for any other information. Now, granted, they've got my email on file so they can send me all these notices yeah. and everything else. Enter a fake email. I don't even think that they check. Well, there is no cut. You normally, know like, sometimes when you sign up for, like, a, a form <laughs> online or something. Yeah. It'll say, you can't access this yet until you go to your email and activate it. Right. There's none of that. There's none of that. There's none so of that. As soon as you hit enter, boom, the video screen pops up. It's it, already playing. It's right there for you. It's They got the on-demand buttons yeah. above it if you want to check out original programming, TV shows, yeah. whatever. Yeah, so they're really trying to entice people to, uh, to order this network. Anyways, uh, so let's get the plugs out of the way. Then we've got about a half an hour. We're going to run down Monday Night Raw from last night. What's the think of Raw? Yeah. I thought it was good. Eh. Really? Eh. I thought it was a good show, man. Hold on. Hold on. Eh? Eh. Happy birthday 
to you, happy birthday to you. I said happy birthday to you. Get that out of your system. We're doing uh, steak and cheesy potatoes. Getting you an ice cream cake. Boone doesn't eat, eat any cake. Yeah, you're, but, you're uh, wasting your money getting cake. I love me some ice cream. I love me some It's on the... Uh, anyways, it's... Uh, but, but, but... Ice cream cake. I love me some ice cream cake. Okay. So I don't care if you eat it. I'm buy it for myself. Have a cake. You know what we were talking about? Boone loves <laughs> himself some beef jerky, right? Always got to... You got to buy this dude Slim Jims or beef jerky, right? Thinking about just taking a piece of beef jerky... Buying a candle and sticking the candle in the beef jerky. That would be awesome. And here you go, motherfucker. I would take it. <laughs> Blow out your yes. candle, you know. <laughs> All right. Uh, the uh, the official website of WZR TV Tuesdays. WZROnline.com. We're on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube as well. Go to Facebook.com slash WZRArmy. YouTube.com slash WZRArchive. And we're on Twitter as well. Just go to WZROnline.com. Top navigation bar. Drop down menu. It's got all the links to Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. WZROnline.com. The official home of WZR TV Tuesdays. In a live chat room on and in progress right now. Lots and lots of people in there. As always tonight. WZROnline.com. Slash chat, WZROnline.com slash chat. Get in there. Lots and lots of people in there, as always, tonight. Uh, Winner's Lair knows me too fucking well. Lactose intolerant. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, he's lactose intolerant, but shit. Cheese, we, buy a, so. we buy a brick of cheese and the thing's going the next morning. I mean, I like guy fucking rips through it. Um, cube steak, too. I love me some cube steak. I hey, live for that. Before we get into uh, Monday Night Raw, I think yes. it's a good time to do a... Uh, National Weather Service of Albany, New York. Let's yeah. do a radar check. I'm telling you, check out weather.com or go to the. Uh, you know what you, you do? If you want, if you want to view exactly what we're viewing right now, you go to Google.com and in the uh, bar you type in NWS for National Weather Service. NWS Albany radar. The first thing pops up, and it's that link right there on Google. You click it, it'll load the radar, and then over on the left hand side. You'll see there's a velocity um, thing over here, uh, or, or reflectivity, right? There's a composite and a base. If you go to the base and you loop it, you can see it. The storm's moving our way. So if we do a uh, if we do a refresh over here, we'll get our radar up here, and we will see. Oh, I hear some thunder. Oh, out there it looked right like it died out a little bit. It's not, um, I mean, out by Syracuse, they had tornado warnings. That's the storm else. right there? It's This is what's headed our way right here. Kick that storm's ass in No, this is a big one. It's a yeah, good Kick one. the storm's ass in two seconds. Look at all the warnings. That's a tornado warning. See the red? I'll fucking cloud up. See the red box right there? That's a tornado warning oh. right there. okay. No, you won't. Where are we at in between the red boxes here? We Where are, are uh, right here. Yeah, I ain't got no red boxes. No, we got about, no, I mean, by the time the storm gets here. The McDonald's has red boxes. You can read movies from it and shit. Oh, red box? Yeah. You know, it's, uh, that's Netflix, right? Isn't that ne no, Netflix? No. I thought it was. Uh, Redbox isn't Netflix? No. Oh. Okay. It's very similar. Yeah. Well, right. It's like a drive through Netflix. <coughs> oh. Yeah. Okay. Netflix, you have to wait for them to come to mail that. You just yeah. pull it right out like a vending machine. Anyways, Monday Night Raw from last night. Right? Montreal! Montreal, Quebec, Canada. So listen. So of course, the screw job's coming up at some point. Oh, you know they're going to reference mm -hmm. that. What has it been? 15 years? 17, 17. years? 17. It was 97. 17 years. That's, yeah, 14 and 3. Yeah, 17 years. 17 years. And they're still, to this day, in 2014, referencing the screw job. And you got think a large portion of their Montreal. audience are 14 or younger. Have they weren't even alive when it I happened. Know. I know. And it's not like they air replays of it. They I'm do make it part of their history. They, they acknowledge it so much that I could see where fans, even if they weren't born during it, would know all about it, you know? I guess. I mean, 14-year-olds aren't going back and watching. No, but it's brought up so often in documentaries and That's promos true. and stuff. Like, for example, what was WrestleMania 3? But how many 14-year-olds watch documentaries, man? Oh, promos and storylines. It's always brought up and referenced eh, one way right. or the other. My point is... Hogan slammed Andre at WrestleMania 3. That was 1987. Mm -hmm. That's three years old. By all intents and purposes, I shouldn't have any fucking memory or That's clue true. of it, but That's I still true. know it happened, even though I didn't re probably didn't even watch it, or did, but who the fuck, three-year-olds don't remember anything. You know what I mean? Right, but I, right. I was aware of it as history went on because it was such a famous thing. 
that would arguably even more sure. famous. You're so big into documentaries and things like that, so of course you're going to know. I, I, I know what you're saying. Documentaries. Say it again. Documentaries. That's better. You were doing like documentaries or something. Documentaries. Weird. Documentaries. Documentaries. Bam. I don't say it that way. New York anyways. accent. What does he do? Oh, it's my New York accent. All right. Um. So the authority, they've uh, been given or they're on vacation. 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 Even though Triple H was tweeting during the show and I shit. I know. I know. Right. Instagramming too. Right. Was he Instagram? Yeah. Okay. Is the AC not working tonight? It doesn't work as good in here anymore. Really? Yeah. Every once in a while, it'll kick on and I you think hear a you noise. Killed it, man. It's been running for like Whoa. three weeks straight. Yeah. So. I haven't even turned it off. I turn it down, but I don't turn it off. Yeah, it's hot in here tonight. It's a little warm. Yeah. Um, so they're on uh, they're on vacation, um, and uh, so there's no authority. And not only that, but shoot, they were on vacation last night. Nothing. There wasn't any turmoil. On, yeah, there on, wasn't anything you know, where like, oh, if the authority was here, that wouldn't have happened. I can't think of anything off the top of my head. I mean, we'll get through the show. And, and they didn't have any authority figure like Vicky Guerrero's been fired. Brad Maddox has been fired. Yes. Um, so there, there was no real loss. Yeah. Boss in, in charge. Well, it didn't need to be. I mean, if you look, if we go through the show, there was no instances like with Roman Reigns getting in that battle royal a couple weeks ago when he wasn't supposed to. Yeah, but it happened yeah. because they weren't there. There was nothing like that that I can remember off the top of my head. Good segue, Roman Reigns. Yes. What'd you so say? They, uh, I gotta tell you, man, they opened up uh, Monday Night Raw. Roman Reigns comes down, still coming out through the crowd. Yes. Uh, still tonight. wearing the vest. He's the only one left wearing the. Still wearing the he vest. He got the shield music, the shield look. I know he got shield, it all right. The shield entrance. They all got yeah. new stuff. He's the same thing. Man. Yeah. Um, I gotta tell you, Roman Reigns. I mean, listen, we've been talking about it week after week. Where please don't I say think, it. I think even you brought it up. Uh, listen, he wasn't great. I, he was not great on the microphone. You're saying that Hell, past tense like he, he was now. He, he wasn't even... Wasn't? Isn't. Dude, wait a minute. Isn't. He wasn't terrible. He isn't terrible. It is past tense. Raw happened last night. No, you're saying in Talking the past promo. he wasn't a great promo. You're saying last night he was good? Is that what you're saying? I'm saying last night he wasn't bad. He wasn't terrible. He wasn't great. Oh, he wasn't bad. So I would say he was... Can I say decent? Decent. I'll he take these. Decent. Yeah, but it, it was one of those where it was so. You say, of course, Cena sucks when I'm here. That's an easy pop. You're okay. Triple H, or you're Randy Orton's bitch. That's an easy pop. So they gave him quick sound bites that are guaranteed to get a reaction. He doesn't know. There's something. Okay. Here was my favorite Roman Reigns line of the night. It was not in this opening promo. It was backstage later with him and Cena. Mm -hmm. Cena said something, blah, 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 blah. Holmes. And Reigns replies back, like, yeah, well, when you get in there in the ring with me, it is Holmes. Yeah, he just basically yeah, yeah. threw the Holmes back in his face. Right, right. Which is funny, because that's two weeks in a row. The week before, Cena was going, yo, yo, doing all that in Triple yeah, H. Yeah, Triple H mocked Triple H went right? way over the top with it, which I thought was hilarious. But but, but listen, Reigns comes out there. The, the, the problem, okay, his delivery was okay. But there are points where, okay, he'll say his line... And then he'll take like a pause, and it's like he's a little bit off on his timing before he starts back up. He's not confident. Sentence, sentence number. He's not. He's confident. not sure of himself. Exactly. A lot of people and in between when they're doing the pauses, it's because they're either milking the crowd, right, or, or whatever. When he's pausing, you almost get the impression that shit. He doesn't know what to say right now. Or he's, he's trying to think trying of to his think next, of it. Yeah, next exactly. Line. You can see it in his eyes. And I don't agree with. I mean, we talked about it a couple of weeks ago, where this guy should be coming out at WWE house shows and cutting a promo in front of three, four, five thousand long fans promos, at the too. Long a promos. nice ten-minute segment. After he gets used <laughs> to that, then right. have him come out on live television in front of millions of people. You have him exercise that muscle off TV. Yes. Basically do a dry run or a practice run for your promos, and then have him cut that long 10 to 15 It can only minutes. help. But they rush. They rush, rush, rush. And it happens all the time. And sure enough, Roman Reigns, who's basically had no promo time whatsoever... I mean, there's been a couple times here and there with the Shield, but Ambrose and Rollins... With the Shield, he would get that final one line. He would get the punchline. Yeah, so here, remember night. your line, not like, here's your promo. No, remember your line. Right. Now right. he's got promos he's supposed and, to be and cutting. And nothing at live with events. With no practice at live events. Nothing at house shows, no practice. So he comes out there, and they basically say, go out there and cut a 10, 15-minute yeah, promo. start the show like, off whoa. with a 10-minute promo. You know? Our live three-hour show, we're going to have you start it off with a 10-minute 
fucking talking session. But to his credit, I thought, I mean, listen. He pulled it off. He's a rookie. He's he's new. Yeah. Hasn't been around for all that long. Hasn't had very much time on the microphone at all. So for him to come out there and cut that 10 to 15 minute promo, I don't think he stuttered once. Maybe once. I don't know about stuttering, yeah, but it was a lot of that stuttered. where he just didn't seem comfortable. He didn't seem comfortable, but the fact but is... you can feel that is, when you're watching it, so it makes it... Mm. But the fact is, he went out there in his first try, basically. He's had a couple of promos recently where he's had a couple few minutes by himself. Uh, this was him by himself in the middle of a ring to open yeah. Monday Night Raw. First time he's opened the show I think a promo like that. You, I think you see him come out in... I don't know, give him two years, three years from now. You have him come out and cut that same promo that he cut last night in a couple of years from now, maybe even maybe even sooner than that. It'll be a completely different Roman Reigns with his delivery. This dude, coming out of the segment, I said this dude, and I put it on Facebook, is going to be a megastar. He's got the look that they want. Uh, he's a good worker, I mean, from what we've seen so far. For, needs a little yeah. bit of work on his promos, and... This dude, in a couple of years, is is going to be... He's the great guy. in tag matches, triple threats, fatal four-ways, whatever. Six-man tags. By himself, I don't think he's really at a point where, like, a pay-per-view match is like 15 minutes, right, for a top guy. Right. I don't think he's at a point where he can carry a 15-minute match by himself. You may be right. Without, right. Maybe with the right opponent. Triple you know, H is coming along. up. Right, that'll... But, uh, yeah, so he's not like he's perfected his ring stuff yet either you know he's got ways to go on that he's got ways to go on his promos but like you said he's got the look he's got the the support of the company that really wants to give him the shove so yeah it's almost inevitable he's gonna be a star but i don't think he's gonna be the fucking face of the company the next rock steve austin john cena that everybody thinks he's gonna i don't think it's gonna happen it's not gonna happen overnight because largely what you said they're doing it too soon they're yeah. rushing him into a role that he's not ready for. Right, right. So I think that ultimately hurts him more than helps him. I now, I Seth Rollins? Yeah. Fucking forget about it. That yeah. dude is a fucking stud. But Ambrose is right there, there with him, man. Ambrose, Ambrose too. is Ambrose, right there. Ambrose's promos are probably my favorite promos right now. I'd agree with that. Paul Heyman right. probably first because he's Paul Heyman. CM Punk and Paul Heyman used to be the two spots I'd look forward to each week on the mic. Right. Now... Rollins and Ambrose. Yeah. You know, and Heyman too. Yeah. But Heyman pretty much has the same promo every week since WrestleMania. Let me say this. Isn't it crazy that, that over the past couple of years, right, and, and they've, they're they in a, a, a rebuilding mode, right, where yeah. these new guys... Like a new generation. Being, it's a new generation, and they're trying to make guys. They're trying to, to take rookies and kind of NXT. Yeah. Um, you've had guys like Damian Sandow have come up, and, and, you know, all these guys that have come up, right? Three guys... You put them in one group in the Shield, and those three guys the show. right now... Yeah, they're the show. They are the show right they're now. The show. Those three guys in the Shield have all branched off into their own roles. And, and I would say right now, in the rebuilding mode that we've had, yeah, I would say the three top stars in the last couple of years... Top new stars. Top new stars yeah. in the last couple of years to come up from NXT... You gotta put I've Bray got, in there too. Bray Wyatt's yeah. another one. Absolutely. Cesaro's gonna be there, but not yet. Right, right. Um, but we'll say Bray Wyatt and all three Shield members right now. I agree. Right, and, and I would say even Seth Rollins. I was so worried when they split that Shield. I was. Up. I thought he, and I he was, was so too. goddamn talented. Yeah. I didn't realize he was that good on the mic. Yeah. That motherfucker can cut He's a promo good, like nobody's business. He's good. He had a backstage thing with Cena too that was awesome. Yeah. He walks in and Cena's like. You know, like, oh, fuck, because they're going to have the main event later tonight against each other. He's like, hey, we can talk like civilized people. I thought that was so cool, man. I thought it was so fucking cool. He's, like, really confident and calm. Like, the opposite of what we talk about, Reigns, where you see it in his eyes where he's not sure of himself. He's hesitating and stuff. Rollins is fucking smooth. And Ambrose is, you got Ambrose is, Ambrose is, Ambrose is right there, man. awesome. He's yeah. got a style of promo. He's got that voice too, man. Yeah, the voice and there's a style that he has that I've never seen before. Yeah. I don't think yeah. I've ever seen anybody talk the way he talks. Well, remember Very the promo? Different. Remember the promo uh, just a couple of weeks ago where he was like, and I'm going to rip your, your eyes out, out yeah. and then I'm going to take your teeth. That was so awesome, So unique. Man. Yeah. So simple. Yeah. But very different. And you think you've seen it all. That was very different yeah. in tone. And oh, Bray as well. Bray's got the same thing, right? Bray like, yeah. sounds cool. Yeah. But uh, to tell you from doing play-by-play, it's hard to recap because I don't know what the yeah. fuck you're <laughs> talking about. It's all innuendo. It's all analogies. Right. It's all, you know. Right. 
Yeah. So you never know. There's not a whole lot of substance there. I mean, yeah. there's a message deep within all that poet, poetic, yeah. whatever he's saying. Yeah. But it just sounds really cool, and he looks really cool, and the yeah. presentation, the entrance, and everything's really cool and right. new and different. Yeah. But yeah, I, I would put Ambrose on a level that is very rare. Ambrose and Rollins as well. Rollins too. Yeah. yeah but yeah. no, Rollins is just a really good promo. Ambrose, there's just something so different. Well, about and him. both of them are great workers too. That's the Amazing. thing. Amazing. Uh, I used to watch Especially Rollins. Rollins. Oh. Rollins, the son of a bitch, was the one I thought was going <coughs> to sink Look when they split on. That motherfucker might be the guy to be the guy out of that three. I used to watch Seth Rollins and Ring of Honor as Tyler Black on the indie scene. He's got to change his ring gear though. Oh yeah. my god, I that's know. That's ridiculous. ridiculous. Right. The fucking plastic oh. looking. Dude, Tyler Black on the indie scene, yeah. I mean, this dude is an amazing, amazing Very worker. Good. And uh, Dean Ambrose on the, uh, in the, on the indie scene as well. Why can't I remember? John Moxley. John Moxley, yeah. and there was another one too. We used two different names. Yeah. One was for like Evolve and Dragon Gate, but John Moxley on the indie scene was as well. Was it John Moxley? I know it was Moxley. It was John, John Moxley. Moxley. J-O-N? There was, there was one other name that I... It's, or was it J-O-H? Oh, whatever. J-O-N, I believe. J-O-N yeah. Moxley. That's what I'm picturing in my head. Yeah. yeah. Um, so Roman Reigns is, is out, right? And then as as he's coming to the end, towards the end of his promo, uh, Kane comes out, yeah. right? Uh, Kane's music hits, and uh, stays Roman the top Mox- of the ramp. Right. Yeah, basically, right. when he said, you know, you're Roman Randy Orton's bitch, mm. big pop, and then Kane comes down. It was the cheap pop, like you Very said. Very easy earlier, pop. But, but as Kane's over. coming down, Reigns hits the fucking. The uh, ramp, and they go at it, and blah, 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 blah. Right, and and that was it. I mean, that was basically the opening segment. He speared, um, one of spearing, um, or the agents came out to break it up, right? Is that this segment? Yeah, yeah okay, it was the yeah, opening yeah. segment. Jamie Noble came out, uh, Fit Finley, Finley came Mike out. Mike Rotunda. Mike Rotunda, D. Malenko. D. Malenko. Um, all the agents that was and a couple of other A bunch of referees, yeah. Right. He speared Finley. Um, Finley? Yeah. Finley, took, Finley took a wicked spear, spear yeah, right? He took that shit. But when you think about it, Finley's the only guy that's still active, right? I mean, Malenko's not wrestling. Uh, Rotunda can't Finley's take a spear not like that anymore. Uh, Finley could. Uh, Finley's the guy. But that he's could a still go bad out. son of a bitch. Finley's the guy that could still go out. I mean, just as of what a couple of years ago, he got before he got yeah. fired. You know, well, Noble's uh, young as shit too. I don't know why. He Noble, got you're right. But, um, they could have done Noble. You're right. You're right. Yeah, but Finley is a tough motherfucker. Oh, yeah. He's always yeah. been known as that. Yeah. Everybody will right. tell you, Finley's one of the baddest son bitches. Right. You know, I remember there was a, a running joke on the last episode of Nitro. He hated Lex Luger and Buff Bagwell because they were so cocky and arrogant. In real life, he hated them? Yeah. Really? And uh, he had said when they found out WWF bought them and it was the last Nitro, he said, please book me in a handicap match with Luger and Bagwell. Mm-hmm. Because I can beat the shit out of them, and the company's going under anyway, and they can't fire me. Right. I right. want to fuck them up, you know. Did he really fuck them up? No, they never did uh. it. But he, he, I'm sure he was half kidding. But you know, from what I hear, he was like, "No, book me with Luger and Bagwell. Really? I'm gonna stiff the fuck out of both of them." No shit. And they're no fucking shit. Luger and Bagwell are they're tough guys, big yeah. motherfuckers. Yeah. yeah, I don't know if they're tough, but they're they look big. Luger and tough. looks bad these days. Luger man. looks like a fucking cancer Dude, patient. He's so or something. skinny. Yeah, and very yeah, frail and. Bad. It's he bad. was all over that. Did you watch the debut of the Monday Night War? No, I didn't last night. Last night after Raw? Did you check it out? Was it good? Yeah, it was real good. <laughs> was it? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Mm. It's like a documentary, but it was one episode. He was out uh, there, though? It's not starting up yet. Last night was just a sneak peek because the free preview week of the WWE Network. Right, they don't want to give it they away. They don't start until August, which is next month, but okay. yeah, that was like the first episode, I guess. Yeah. And yeah. then we have a break for another month, and then the real series starts week to week to week to week. But Luger didn't look good? Luger was, yeah, it was the same interviews you've seen him taped, and if you've watched other documentaries, he's been in like the Attitude Era and yeah. NWO and stuff, but uh, wasn't, yeah, he just looked like real great, huh? skinny and bad. Mm. Man, that's sad, man. Uh, get through our live chat room, WZROnline.com. Motherfucking dot com. Slash chat, WZROnline.com. Slash chat. What do we got? Winners Lair in there. Dino UK. Reigns, crazy but lovable. Dicks and more dicks and more dicks and more dicks. Oh, my God, dick. Where uh, did you see this? Teresa. Something like that. Uh, A-Train 001. Oh, okay. I see it. All right. E Shark 55 is in there. A lot of people in there. Give you guys shout outs here. Come on in there. WCRonline.com slash chat. All right. So, next up, uh, after the opening segment, it was Luke Harper and Eric Roman against Rowan against uh, the Usos. For the 100th time. 
Great match again, though. Yeah, it was Every match. time these and guys are And now they're saying that with that win, they've earned a shot at the tag title, so we're going to see it again. So we're going to see it again. Yeah. You know what, though? I don't mind seeing it over and over. Well, it obviously, like they're giving them the titles this time. They would yes. not do two pay-per-views in a row for the right. titles if they're not giving them the titles. The original plan was for the Usos to drop titles at the last pay-per-view. Money in the bank. Uh, money in the bank. And they was didn't that the plan? Up. That was the original okay. plan. We put it up on the uh, on the website. Um, clearly, at the next pay-per-view, Battleground, um, they're going to give them the titles. I mean, I, I say clearly. Uh, it seems yeah, you never know, but obvious, it seems pretty but, obvious right. you know, that they would. We had, what was next, Alicia backstage, Fox? Backstage, they had oh, uh, backstage. Seth Rollins, Randy Orton, and Kane. This is what you talked about and earlier. It was interesting. No, I didn't talk about this one. This was, uh, they had referenced the authority not being there. and Orton and Kane, Orton was like, if, Rain, if Roman Reigns would have hit you one more time, I would have oh, came yeah. out and helped okay. you. Right. But, you know, they broke it up. If he would have hit you one more time, though, I would have been there. Just yeah. like I know you're going to be there for me right. Uh, right. at Battleground in the Fatal 4-Way, because they're both in the match. And then, uh... Rollins walks in, and Rollins is kind of fucking with them, and Orton doesn't seem to like him. And when Rollins leaves, Orton tells you, if you're Kane and I'm Orton, Orton's like, man, I hate that guy. Yeah. And Kane's like, yeah, me too, but not as much as you. Or you're starting to get on my nerves, and Kane's again, but not as much as you're starting to get not on my nerves. Not as much as you. And he walks out. I think the, the idea coming out of Raw last night is you've got four guys in the Fatal 4-Way for the WWE title at Battleground. It's going to be two baby faces and two heels, right? So the idea here is you've got John Cena and Roman Reigns who are going to work together. You know, they were posing. I mean, work together for the most part. Yeah. And then you've got Randy Orton and Kane who are going to kind of work together for the most part. But there's tension between both the... the, the uh, trying to build tension between everybody, but well, I think kind of like a two-on-two. Two. That segment made it clear that Rollins, Kane, and Orton all kind of have a thing. And we know Cena's walking out of battleground with the title because sure. of Cena Lesnar. So those right. three will probably end up fucking each other and Cena somehow wins. Something, something Which like Which really that. bothers right. me on one level because why put Roman Reigns in back-to-back -back title matches and have him lose both of them? He was in Money in the Bank. He, didn't he doesn't have to lose clean he, in yeah, either he's not, match, yeah. though. The, technically, yes, but he's had two chances to become champion, and he hasn't succeeded in either chance. Or he will by the time Battleground. Right, but it's not. I, I, I understand what you're saying. Yeah, he's not but technically losing a match, but he's not winning the title, and he's able right, to. Right, right. I don't think it, first of all, I don't think he's ready to, to not, be WWE but champion. But they don't put him so in the title he, matches then. No, I can understand if you're not going to put him in the title match in a one-on-one -on -one contest and have him lose multiple times. Oh, that would be a lot One-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, yeah. But the fact that other people are in the match, kind of, it doesn't make him look, you know, terrible by losing. No, it's... Roman Reigns and three other, or five other yeah. guys lost that match as well. Four other guys lost that match. Same Still. thing at, at Battleground. Three other guys are going to lose that match. Still. Not just him. And two other guys, because one's got to win. But yeah. yeah. Still, I, I say don't put him in the match all together. If he's not going to win the title, but don't you, put him in there. You've got to have him in the title picture. You've got to you've got to make him make him. Not necessarily. Yeah, like they could have the authority screw him out of an opportunity. Like, you know. Wait till I get my opportunity, then I'm going to win it, you know. And I, th I think the fact that they've got him in main events, they've got him, you know, going after the title at least, and, and other guys, I don't we'll agree to disagree on that one. Okay. Uh, we had Alicia Fox and Nikki Bella, uh, for the authority. Yeah. What? The one arm tied behind the oh, back. Oh, Jesus, <laughs> yeah. For the authority, um, <laughs> who's on vacation this week. Uh, you know, one ruling they made was on the Divas match. I know. Okay. <laughs> uh, the, uh, the, Listen, we're the, taking a vacation, but make sure on that Divas match they have yeah, their they hand got tied a, behind the back. Hand tied behind the back. It was obviously Anyways. an extension from the Brie Bella storyline. Right. They're building right. Brie and Stephanie at SummerSlam or Battleground? SummerSlam. SummerSlam. SummerSlam, so they keep fucking with Nikki right. to kind of stick right. it to Brie. So Nikki gets a uh, hand behind the back first, right? That leaves uh, Alicia Fox, right? No, was I thought this was... um. No, that was later. It was a tag match. Page oh, the uh, other Divas match. Okay, that's that's, that's where they split okay. up. Okay. So uh, Alicia Fox, she you know puts her one hand out. Saying all black people look alike. Well, how'd you get that? No, I was. I, it was the stipulation. <laughs> it was the stipulation with the yeah. hand tied behind the back. Oh, it's a camera name, we think. But uh, anyways, so uh, Nikki Bell's all tied up, ready to go. Alicia <laughs> Fox puts one hand out, other hand out. Nope. Not going to do it. One's up attacking yeah. Nikki Bella. And, and it uh, ended and weird. Like that. she just walked away. Yeah, it was. There was no finish. It was weird. I, yeah. I, I don't know what that was, but okay. 
We had uh, Rusev against uh, Rob Van Dam. Uh, Rusev wound up uh, winning here. Mm, problem with Rob Van Dam, man. Good. Well, the problem with Rob Van Dam is the guy, you know, is on three months, is off three months. Is on three months, is off three months. So it's like the guy comes back. They're never going to put him in a title picture. They're never going to give him a title. And they're going to job him out to make guys that they're pushing, a guy like Rusev, who's clearly being pushed to the top. But do it. Uh, well, RVD is going to be a, a jobber. Chris Jericho is the same exact same situation, way. except right. they're putting him with a main guy on a main show to help elevate this main guy, Bray Wyatt. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But uh, because he's supposedly working Miz at Battleground, right? But uh, and Bray will probably fuck it up. But um, this is kind of a delay to get to SummerSlam with. I can Bray. see. All right, let's use RVD because he's not being around for a while. Let's use him to build Rusev. But having him lose a Rusev on a nothing matters Raw match doesn't really help Rusev and doesn't do nothing. With, build it up for a pay per view. Bruce has finally got to fight a name. He's not fighting jobbers anymore. He's going to fight true. a real name. And then he kicks his ass at the pay-per-view where it means right. something. On a Raw, unadvertised. But how do they view Rob Van Dam? Same they way they view Jericho. That, did you hear me just now? No, like, no, 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 no. But I, up to a show where it matters. I know, but have, have Rusev beat somebody a little bit higher up than, than Rob Van Dam. He's got to do think. it one step at a time. He's got to climb the ladder. He right. beats guys on this level, then this level, then this level, but right. just on a nothing happening Raw match, RVD's a name. That's, and that's even if you, don't you wanna, and I think he's a he, name, he but is. in WWE's view... No, I, he's a name in WWE, but he's a name that they don't want to support because he's going to be gone soon. True. So is Jericho, and they're still willing to put Jericho with one of their top guys that's true. because, hey... Put him with a top guy on a big show. Oh, yeah. I think WWE's offer to Jericho was, yo, if you come back, we're going to put you with Bray. And Jericho said, hell yeah. yeah. If if they went to Jericho and said, oh, we're going to put you with uh, Rusev or somebody like that. Go again. Jer- yeah, yeah, Jericho may have said, I'm not coming back. So Jericho's got leverage. Where if Rob Van Dam, I think Jericho's got the leverage where he can say, I'll work with this guy and I'll come back. But if you're going to make me work against this guy, I'm not coming back. I don't care. Rob Van Dam, I don't think he's got as much leverage as right, a guy yeah. like Chris He does, does if he uses it, I would think, but I don't think he cares. I yeah, think he just likes true. wrestling, you know, making money. And You're probably right. Probably right. Um, all right, so we moved on. We, uh, we'll we skip down to uh, Randy Orton and Dean Ambrose. A uh, really good match between uh between I don't like that they're beating Ambrose either. You know, we put it up on the website. The reason that they had Orton defeat Ambrose clean uh, last night on Raw was to make Orton look stronger yeah. going into the battleground and then SummerSlam. SummerSlam, teams. he's supposed to work with Reigns, so they got to have him strong. Cause he's going to lose the battleground. Right. So he's got to be strong, and that Reigns and Orton both being in the match, they'll probably fuck around, and that'll be why they both lose. Mm-hmm. And then they split off and go, in, or split off and go into SummerSlam with each other. But yeah, like you said, they need Orton strong going into SummerSlam as a credible guy for Reigns to beat because if Reigns beats Orton without off a couple of losses, it doesn't mean anything. Right. If he's strong going into SummerSlam and Reigns beats him, oh, he just beat somebody. But let me say this. Even with the Dean Ambrose... There's other guys you could put there. Dean Ambrose is a brand new guy you're trying to push. Yeah. Why beat him already? It's once again a case of Dean Ambrose is in a match with a guy like Randy Orton, who's a top star in WWE. So, number one, gets a little bit of rub right there by working with a guy like Randy Orton, okay? I understand that Ambrose takes the loss, but coming out of Raw last night and coming out of Raw the week before... Dean Ambrose they made still bowl, yeah. looked like a star, despite coming out of Raw last night, you forgot about the loss to Randy Orton, because he came out during the yeah. main event, and went after Rollins again. It so, pisses me off when this happens, too, because you know for a fact, as soon as Raw ended, what was the one thing I told you about Ambrose cutting Rollins' uh, cash-ins off? What did I tell you? I said, why the fuck doesn't he wait until he actually cashes in, ring the bell, you're, you're right, you're screw right. him. And then I hear but, other people talking about it. Now I feel like I I'm ripping them off because no, we're no, no, a day no. later. No. But I brought this up to you as you, soon as you showed up. I night. said, why the hell yep. wouldn't they wait until they ring the bell and then screw him and then he has no more chances left? And you had a good explanation, which I don't remember. I don't remember it either. But it made sense. But, 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 boom you had a boom perfect, basically says, yeah. Boom basically says, have Rollins go out there. When he hands in and when the bell rings... Yeah. Then have Ambrose come out, you cost him the match, and he, and he have a chance him. Yeah. And there's no chance, and then he loses the briefcase. By having him come out before yeah. he cashes in the briefcase, every time he's still going to leave with yeah. the briefcase because you didn't wait for the bell to ring. Yeah. But and if listen, it was real life, let's put it this way. If, if, I'm, if it's real life and it's wrestling's real, and I'm about to cash in my briefcase, and he screwed me week after week after week before I can actually turn it in, Right. 
I would be like, all right, well, I know he's going to screw me when I come down to bring this briefcase, so let me bring somebody with me yeah. to stop him. To stop him. You know what I mean? Him. Well, and, and who, who knows? I mean, wrestling scripted, obviously. It's just something that we're... we're really? O- we're, over, we're over, you know, analyzing. We're, we're, we're trying to... We're, we're making more of it than what it... No, is. yeah. You know what I mean? But uh, it, it's... it's uh, let me just go back to Ambrose. Coming out of Raw last night, I, th- I look at it like this. I understand Dean Ambrose lost to Randy Orton, but the fact that he was in there with a main eventer and Randy Orton and then came out during the main event, and Roman Reigns was out there during the main event as well, and, and Seth Rollins as well, all three S.H.I.E.L.D. members, despite one or two of them suffering a loss here or there, they're still in the main event picture, they're still working with main event guys, and that's only going to elevate them... Um, there's the ways next, to do it without. There, I mean, you're I making know. excuses for them. Like, no, he's still, you know, they did this and that. But why put him in the match in, in, in the first place? Yeah, I know. There's other right. guys you could have put in there. He doesn't need a rub from Randy Orton. People know who Dean Ambrose is. I know, but uh, the fact that he's in there working with a main event guy. Yes. But, um. I know. What, what, what do you think of when I say this? You ready? Yeah. Now! From Raw last night. During the Ambrose Orton match. Oh god! Somebody was in the ring. It was a drop kick. No, it was a top. It was off the top rope. It was going to be like a double axe handle or something. Off the right. Top. It was Roman Reigns, right? No, Roman Reigns. Ambrose and Orton. I said. Oh, Ambrose and Orton. Yeah. Who missed it? Ambrose goes up. I uh, see. I missed the spot. I heard people talking about it today. It was bad. Somebody said now. Do it, it now. Orton had his back turned, and you're Ambrose. You're up on either the second rope or the top rope. And okay. you say now, so I'm supposed to turn around and boom, get hit. Right, right, right. You say now and jump. As soon as you say now, I don't even turn around and you jump and then just land on your feet behind so Orton. I missed it. I and then Orton turns around, around and they start fighting and I'm like, did he just jump off the top right, rope right, right. and land on his feet, not touch Orton and then so they were, nothing? They were calling the match in ring, which everybody Very does. badly botched spot. Not everybody does. A lot of people. Well, a lot of people do it. They have a guys, couple of things. And if, you guys, if you guys look closely when you're watching the match, read their lips. Sometimes when they have their head down or they'll go like this, they'll, they'll be like, now. You especially now. when you got them like a, do they, when they do exactly. the rest spots. When they're on the right. ground, you hold them. When we get up and throw in a rope, duck the clothesline. Exactly. Or whatever. If they're on the ground, they'll... they'll like some stuff. people aren't good at hiding. They call them no, spots. No, I put a YouTube video. Thunder. Up. Is that thunder? That was I loud just, thunder right there. But uh, a couple weeks ago on you or Facebook, I put a um, YouTube video up of like just a bunch of different guys calling spots that are like very loud about it. Right, right. Which is funny. One of them wasn't like loud thunder. Yeah, right. one of them wasn't a spot that was Jericho outside the ring. He's doing something. He gets ready to go back in the ring, and they say, "Go back to Toronto, you son of a bitch." Or something. And Jericho says, I'm from Winnipeg, you dumb asshole, or something. And then he gets back in the ring. That's awesome. <coughs> right now, the thunderstorms are about to come rip roaring through here. And rip perfect roaring. I ain't heard that in a while. Perfect timing. Yeah. We're going to a commercial break right now so we can come back in the middle of the thunder. <laughs> giggity, giggity, giggity. All right, we got to go to commercial break. Anyways, you're listening to WZR TV Tuesdays. You do me a favor. Rapid fire. Can you open the. Uh, the window up? Yeah, rapid fire. When we go out. Rapid fire. Uh, Facebook.com slash Ryan Clark WZR. Facebook.com slash Ryan Clark WZR. Get there. We're going to uh, put up the rapid fire question during the commercial break. Uh, you guys can submit questions, comments, whatever you guys want to talk about in our numero dos. Facebook.com slash Ryan Clark WZR. Get over there right now and submit your questions. We're coming back with a live thunderstorm in progress. You are listening to WZR TV Tuesdays with the birthday boy, Matty Boone, and Ryan Clark. We'll be back right after this. I'm back. Tuesday night, WZR TV. I'm going to be joined momentarily by my partner in crime, Mr. Ryan Clark. Uh, for now, I've got my buddy Daisy over here. Oh, I said Daisy. And off she goes. But uh, we're going to get into your rapid fire. Give you last chance to get your questions and comments submitted. Go to Facebook.com slash Ryan Clark WZR. That's Facebook.com slash Ryan Clark WZR. I'm assuming he put the post up, but I don't know. But uh, if he did, get over there. Get your last questions and comments in. And we will answer them here towards the latter part of our numero dos. 
And now we are joined by the host of this show. I had to get the uh, rapid fire up. Man, we forgot about that. There you had to take a piss. I had to pee right. and then go do the rapid fire. Check fucking dumb weather. Grass. Ask him. I just, the rapid fire went up less than 15 seconds ago on my Facebook page. We didn't have it up. Ooh, what's up with your weather? Get it out of the way so I can have uh, fun with it. I'm right. a little disappointed, to be honest with you. Uh, I went in and, and looked at the, uh, at the couple of radars, different radars that I have up on. Uh, I actually put a link in the chat. got in trouble for that. But, uh... Why is everybody in the chat room talking about Reggie? I was talking about Daisy. The Daisy? pit bull. Oh, the pit? Yeah, the Daisy, um, and they all said, Reggie, Reggie, Reggie. But, uh, no, I'm, the storms died out, and I was kind of fearful of that, knowing that after the sun goes down, you run out of fuel for the storms, where the dew points go down and the humidity, and you dew know, points, lowers. Of course. Yeah. Yes. Everybody knows the dew points Our go dew down points were damn near 70 today, which is ridiculous. Listen, That's you'd have tropical. to be living under a rock not to know that a 70 dew point means... What does it very mean? humid. It means it's very humid. Very humid. You know? But, uh... Duh. It was hot here today, man. You One walked day. outside, it was yeah. hot. Um... We're going to go to the pool, I think, tomorrow. Maybe we'll chill at the pool for a little bit for your birthday. You know, I still got to work tomorrow like it's another day. I've got to work, too. I'm going to be know, right here working. Busy day, day, too, because a certain thing comes out tomorrow. And I know. I know. It's going to be a busy uh, busy tomorrow night yeah. and the rest of the week. You know, it's going to be a long one. You know what we got to talk about is... Uh, Tomorrow's Wednesday. As far as Tomorrow's Wednesday, center. right. It's not you know what we got to talk about? Uh, two stories. <coughs> you know, people... Uh, I'll save it for... We'll get through Monday Night Raw, but there are two stories that whenever we put them up on the website whether it involves Christ, whether punk. it involves cm punk or whether it involves sting people just go nuts on the comments board there is no update nobody cares we don't care about sting we don't care about cm punk leave it alone drop it this that and the other thing yet you go back and you check the highest viewed posts for the day sting and cm punk are the two highest viewed posts and not only that but <laughs> there are times. Dino UK is very perceptive. You do wear two shirts, huh? Why do you wear an undershirt under a t-shirt? I wear a, uh, a white shirt. I you wear an undershirt t-shirt? You don't wear an undershirt? Not under a t-shirt. Sure you do. No. Everybody wears an undershirt. No undershirt. Oh, That's please. all me, man. Please. Whoa. Um, you get fat, too. <clears throat> no, I always wear an undershirt. That's, they're saying you're complaining about it being hot, but you wear sandals and socks what and did I say? an it, undershirt. It, it, well, he said not. it was humid and hot today. I feel fine now, but yeah, it was hot earlier. You know, I I don't know. I, I thought everybody wears an undershirt under a t-shirt. Under a t-shirt? Yes, under any shirt. A sweatshirt, any shirt. Actually, a lot of people do, and I think it's stupid. I don't know. I don't wear no undershirt for anything. What, what's the point of an undershirt? Can someone tell me that? Well, what's the purpose? I like the look up here. I like the white. Have have a down. half of an inch of white makes it look good? It's I like that. Okay. I like the white. But other than that, is there... What do you think this necklace put makes it look cool? My nephew gave me this. Oh. So, and it's from the, the neck of my dead grandfather. You want to talk about my necklace some more there, jackass? Boy, you took the uh, <laughs> you took the sour train on that one, I man. just tell you, I wear it for a reason, not because I think it looks cool. Well, I'm, you know what? I respect that. Thank I you. I respect that. Yes. That, is, that is cool. It's a nice tribute. All right, no doubt. I respect the tribute. No right. doubt. All right, um, get to our live chat room, WZROnline.com. Dot com. Slash chat, WZROnline.com slash chat. I mean, with the storms before we move on, they, they have weakened out, but there's still going to be a lot of thunder and lightning and, I don't know, some winds. But anyways, probably in about the next 15, 20 minutes, it should be uh, crossing through here in, uh, in Water Police. So anyways, let's, uh, let's get back into it. Monday Night Raw from last night. Then we're going to talk about Sting, the latest on Sting to WWE. What's this whole July 14th, 2014? What's going on next Monday? Sting's hyping something up. Hopefully it's not a big deal because I've got court next Monday night before Raw. That's right, you do. So I do. Starting a day? Uh, no, right before Raw at six o'clock. Six thirty. The court closes at like fucking six o'clock. Six thirty. They do uh, every Monday night. The court, you know, the town hall shuts down, but court normally court is five six o'clock. People get out of work and they've yeah. got to come pay their traffic tickets and everything else. I've got to go back to court. This is my arraignment for court uh, next uh, Monday. 6.30 p.m. So it's going to be packed. Hopefully I can... It's going to be packed number one yeah. and then not only that but I'm hoping that they call my name within the first couple yeah, of we'll people. Yeah, C is what? So A, B, C. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I know. So hopefully I can go up there and get in and out of there fairly quick, come C back home, 
and do uh, Monday Night Raw coverage here. So we'll see. Uh, we'll see what happens next uh, next Monday at court. Anyways, um, all right. So we left off with Randy Orton and Dean Ambrose on Raw. Alberto Del Rio and Dolph Ziggler. They had a really good match too. By the way, I think uh, Sheamus won the uh, Last Man Standing match. And then tonight, real quick spoiler, right? Uh, real quick spoiler at the you fucking asshole man. Do it to the microphone. You just happened to be You're here. An asshole. <laughs> that shit was. That was my asshole face. that made that noise. Yes. Yes. True. So get it out of here. Take a fan. You're gonna make me sit in that. You cracked open a window. Oh my god, dude! Now I gotta come back, and you know it's still gonna fucking linger. I don't smell anything. You know, you know it's gonna linger around here. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> Anyways, um. A real quick spoiler from the uh, from the WWE WWE SmackDown. <laughs> He's an asshole. Farts are fun. You're lucky it's your birthday. Otherwise, I would have slapped it's you right in the my fucking... It's not my birthday. Well, it's your birthday show. <coughs> oh, I would have slapped you right in the fucking lips for doing that. I've don't done ever, that before don't many ever, times. Don't ever stand up, turn uh, to the left, put your ass in front of my face, and fart. It I'm, wasn't... Don't see, ever do that. That's... What's the word? What's wrong with this guy? That's narcissistic thought, uh, thought process, because <laughs> I farted into the microphone so that it could be heard. Where is the microphone? Right here. I didn't put my ass in your face, I put it in the microphone. You just have to be sitting there, Jack. The microphone is about a foot. Yeah. Less than a foot away hey, listen, from my face. where you decide to put it. Sorry. Th- there was if no need for right you to there. turn. I, there was no need I knew for you it wasn't to stand gonna be up, a, turn left, I knew it wasn't going to be microphone. a microphone. You know how sometimes when you're getting ready to fart, you know if it's going to be a loud one or not loud. I knew it wasn't going to be loud. So I said, let me make sure this gets picked up by our microphone equipment, our production technology but equipment. But you didn't think about your co-host. No, I did. A yeah, foot away from the microphone. Briefly, it went through my head and I said, oh yeah, I don't give a fuck what he thinks. And then I farted in your face. <laughs> what happened wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anyways, a real quick uh, spoiler from the WWE SmackDown takings. It sounds like they are gonna do. This is a big deal. It sounds oh. like they're gonna do Bray Wyatt and Chris Jericho at Battleground and not SummerSlam. Now, although they've announced Jericho and Wyatt at Battleground, they announced oh, it. See the lights flicker. That's because the air conditioner clicked on. Oh, really? Yeah. Um. They announced it, so it's they possible. It official. It's official. Okay. So they may add the Miz. They may turn it into a three-way, no. or or if they don't do that and they do the one-on-one contest, I'm guessing that it ends in some sort of disqualification, and they do a rematch at SummerSlam. The problem here is they're rushing it again, man. Chris Jericho comes back. Unless Jericho, maybe Jericho's not going to be around for SummerSlam or he's got to leave right after SummerSlam. No, he's there through Night of Champions. You would think so, no, right? He's there through Night of Champions. That's the agreement. So why would they do, why would they rush into Jericho uh-huh. Wyatt at Battleground? It doesn't. Maybe the story they want to tell, like you said, maybe the story involves a fucking over here, so let's do that now so that SummerSlam is the big blow-off. SummerSlam's the blow-off program? I, I guess. Although, yeah, basically, just... Night of Champions is SummerSlam this year, and SummerSlam is Battleground. Because, like we said, the network subscriptions are up after SummerSlam. So yeah. Night of Champions is their first attempt to get them to re-sign, the six-month people. Yeah. So Night of Champions is, by default, more important than SummerSlam. So it would make sense to do the the The, the, the original match, SummerSlam, the original blow it off SummerSlam, and then do the rematch there, right? Do the blow off. Oh, you're right. That's why I'm surprised, like you are, that they said Battleground. It's surprising that they announced that. Because I had heard it was going to be Jericho Miz Battleground. I know. I, I know. figured Bray would fuck him over there, and that would lead into SummerSlam. Well, Jericho Miz at Battleground was just basically to postpone things, if you will, so that they could get to some Jericho time, yeah. Bray at, at some some time. But I don't know. They announced it uh, for, for SummerSlam, I guess. I don't, I don't know. Um, no, they announced it for Battleground. Or for Battleground, yeah. right. You can do our live chat room, WZROnline.com. Motherfucking do it. Slash chat, WZROnline.com. Slash chat. Get in there. Lots and I mean, lots of people in there, as always, tonight. All right, back to Monday Night Raw. Then I want to talk just something about farts. I said like, fart com. I mean, dot com. Oh. <laughs> oh, I got a fucking jokester over here. We got uh, we had Stardust. He's got red eyes now. Stuff he's always had eyes. red eyes. I noticed that. It was cool. close really? up. That's why I stood out. All right, more so we had uh, Bret Hart returns to Montreal. He's got the star on his hand. Bret Hart returns to yeah. Montreal, Quebec, Canada. I'll last have his theme. I'll just do it. Wee! <laughs> 
And then when he comes out and cuts the promo. So happy birthday to you. I said happy birthday to you. I said happy birthday to you. What? Stop. When he comes out and cuts the promo, we yes. hear that music again. Yes. Why did we hear it twice? Brett Sand? No, they call him Damien Sandhart. Damien Sandhart. I think was that's that what it was? What they call I thought it was Brett Sandhart. Maybe it was Brett Sandhart, yeah. Brett Sandhart. Um, <laughs> good lord, man. Yeah, Brett the Hitman Sandhart. Okay. Brett the Hitman Sandhart. So, uh, I don't get it. Sand? Sandhart? Am I missing? What am I missing? Nothing. Nothing. They just put Sandhart? two names together. Yeah. Alright, anyways. Um, so he comes out, right? And he basically talks about his hero, Shawn Michaels. We're in Montreal. Sandhart. San, San yeah. What did Brett talk about before he came out? I don't even remember. Anything Brett like basically uh, thanked the crowd of Montreal, said that he's always back Oh, and if he, could have, if he could do if one could more do match. One yeah, more yeah. match, right. One more match, then it would be right here. And the crowd the- was popping huge. Like, he was teasing that he would. I know, I know. Pissed me off. Not pissed me off, but I'm like, oh, you, you should have worded that differently, bro. Yeah. Now because they're gonna turn on you when they find out. But I can't. Right. Why right. even say that? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Like, God, I wish I could go so back in time. Sandow comes out, and basically talks about his hero Shawn Michaels, and well, no, Sandow is pretending to be Bret Hart. Right. So he's pretending like Bret Hart's idol is Shawn Michaels. He said, right. Yeah, you tapped out to your own move to your own idol, Shawn Michaels, or I tapped out because he's. He is Bret Hart. He's in uh, third per- or, yeah. uh Yes. Second, first, whatever the first fuck per- person it would yeah, be. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah, another week of Sandow playing a character of somebody another else. Another character, right. It was good to see Bret. It's always good to see Bret back on Raw. It's just, I don't, I think Bret is so, he takes wrestling so he serious. Does. So serious Very that serious. you can't joke around or anything with him, dude. He's just, he's. I mean, he did a little joke uh, at the end. He got, yeah, Sandow he fucked him and said that, uh, you know, your strong, talking was never your strong suit. Right. It isn't. Brett decks him, knocks him out of the ring. He says, you're right, punching is my strong suit. Yeah. It was so that was his little joke. Oh, the great, great <laughs> ending. To and a, that led to a stuff. match between... To a match between uh, Sheamus, wound up coming out, and uh, took out Damian Sandow with the bro kick. We had... Uh, no, he took out Brett Sandhart because he stayed in Brett gimmick. Sandhart, he right. He was doing this thing, thing right. every time he... Yeah. So, the Miz is backstage, and he reads a letter from a guy by the name of... Little Johnny, Johnny Russo. Johnny Russo, yeah. right? And, of oh, course, the funny. first thing that comes to mind is, like, oh, God, Russo. Yeah, Russo yeah. Yes, it was a rib. We put it up on the website today. It was a little shot rib, at Russo. little shot at Russo. Now, I'm wondering about Johnny. First thing that came to mind was Johnny Ace, but I don't think that had anything to do with it. Well, I think Ace, it was Vince Russo. I don't know. The idea was supposed to just be like a little boy. So, like, little, little Timmy boy. or little yeah. Johnny or, you know, Johnny's one of those little boy names. Right, Oh, right. little Timmy loves wrestling. Little, little, little Johnny, Johnny little loves wrestling. Yeah. yeah, it was a rib at, uh, at Vince Russo, who's been blogging as of late. He started a website, uh, Pyro and Ballyhoo.com. What is it? Pyro, Pyro and Ballyhoo, yeah, .com. Okay. Uh, What's Bellevue, Bellevue? Like commotion oh, or okay. like that, whatever. Gotcha. And uh, Pyro's Pyro. Okay. What so, a weird domain name. It is a I, weird one. Bally who? Nobody knows how to spell that, right? Bally who? Spell it. Bally who? Just like it sounds. B A L L Y H O W. H O O. H O O. Yeah. Okay. Bally who? Uh. Uh, anyways, we had uh, so we had the Miz and Jericho, right? That led us into a match between uh, those two. I guess they rushed that last night too. That, and Miz and Jericho, it seemed rushed. Supposed to be a battleground. They bumped things up. Now, oh, you're saying just that they did the match? Yeah, the match yeah, itself felt rushed. Like they, they maybe they were supposed to have ten minutes, but they squeezed it in a five. Well, it just or seemed like they they were gonna they were gonna do Miz Jericho a battleground, and then they were gonna do Jericho and Bray at SummerSlam. Yeah, no. now they bumped up Miz Jericho to Raw yeah. and. Well, they announced it all week. I mean, it was, yeah, they I knew that was that. But I thought it was going to be a fuck finish. A fuck finish, and, yeah. then, and then do a rematch, right? Yeah. Right. But uh, the match itself felt rushed, too. It seemed yeah. like they, they got cut time-wise. And, uh. All right. Uh, Jericho celebrated after the match. Bray uh, Wyatt winds up uh, coming yeah. out. That! It's in his rocking What's chair. What's that? That! That's the Wyatt's uh, intro. What do you call I call If you were doing play-by-play, what, Lights would, out. What, what would you call that when that happens? It's hard to describe when you're doing play-by-play. Like, oh, the debt happened. How do you even write that? I say the Wyatt so, family cut in. Happened. Right. That's right. what I call the it. The lights go out and the Wyatt family Well, that little like that. quick sheet mask comes on the screen yeah. and then it goes dark. Right, 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 So I call it the Wyatt family cut in. I don't know what the fuck to call it. You know. Okay. We had uh, Paige and AJ Lee against Cameron and Naomi. No, I'm thinking... 
The previous week on Raw, right, AJ Lee winds up returning, she comes out, she wins the Divas title from Paige. Mm -hmm. Apparently, people on my Facebook page are saying, I missed something that happened on SmackDown where AJ is now a babyface alongside Paige. Now, the idea here is they're leading to an eventual split between AJ and Paige. Not that they're necessarily a full-time tag team, yeah. but... It's going to lead to a Paige heel turn, and they're going to do Paige against AJ yeah. Lee well, at SummerSlam in a yeah. title rematch. Well, I think the idea is that they respect each other because the night after okay. WrestleMania, Paige took her title, you know, the night after, and then AJ did the same back to her. And AJ so like, did oh, Yeah, respect right. you. You did what I did. I did what you did. And exactly. We have and, mutual and respect, and then eventually that mutual respect turns to jealousy. Jealousy and everything else. Yeah. Right. And then Paige is the one that's going to be going heel. Yeah, um, it looks like Which Paige is surprising. You would think it'd be the other way around. Right. I know. I know. But, so AJ's yeah. going to be a full-time baby face. Paige is going to be going fart? heel. No, I didn't. Okay. I would have told you if it I farted. It smells like fart. And if I did fart, I would have stood okay. up, you wanna... turned to the right, and put my ass in front of the microphone just so that you would fart. Well, if you do that, next time I'm doing I'm fucking pulling my moon you out. You better not ever do it right again. On. This is live television right here. Push extra hard, too, so I can be like that dude in Jackass that squeezes shit out of his ass real yeah, quick. You yeah, yeah, right in your Try face. some shit like that, man. You will get slapped in your fucking lips. I'll be alright. No. You will be hurt. I'll be alright. Anyways, we had uh, Kofi Kingston and uh, Cesaro here. Paul I have a problem there. with this. And I wrote a whole column about it. E-WrestlingNews.com I'm uh, afraid I've got a problem. Yeah, I'm afraid I've got some bad news. I don't like yeah. the way they're booking Cesaro since they split him from the real Americans. Let him cut it, come out and cut that promo last night on Raw, basically. Well, Heyman cut a promo and Cesaro got like one line in about, uh, you know, we speak Quebecia or whatever. He called them rotten. Uh, last night during his promo okay. in French. So Is that what it was? Rotten. And then during the match with Kofi Kingston, the crowd started chanting something, and we couldn't make out what yeah. it was because it was French Canadian, yeah. and That's they were French. emphasizing the word, You are rotten. Is that what they were saying Canadian. in the chant? Okay. You are rotten, and, and they right. would emphasize you. My beef, though, is that this is two weeks in a row they've had Kingston upset Cesaro. It is weird. So right? that doesn't help Cesaro, but then I guess their idea is we'll make him whole by letting him beat the shit out of Kingston afterwards. Okay. So Kingston gets nothing out of getting an upset win because he gets the shit kicked out of him immediately afterwards. So Kingston doesn't get elevated by winning. Cesaro doesn't get elevated by beating Kingston down because Big E comes out and chases him off. So nobody really gets elevated in this. So it's like, why do it? But I think if, if Cesaro goes on to win the IC title, um, in the Battle Royal at mm -hmm. Battleground. You know, if they put a title... Not the IC title. Is he in that Battle Royal? By the way, this is my third cigarette uh, tonight. I'm not... Since I'm the show? doing pretty good, yes. Since like... You're at about ten. One, two, three, four, five. This is six. Six? Yeah. This is three. This is three. I, I put them out. I, I, I smoke half and then I put it I out. I can't do that. Smoke the other half. Yeah. It, it helps me quit. I'm trying to quit. Um, okay. So anyways, it's... It'll happen. Okay. It doesn't happen overnight. Keep telling yourself that. Anyways. Yeah. You should be, you know, you should, when I tell you I'm trying to quit, you should Support. You should say to me, good job, man. Good Listen, job. it'd be awesome you if you say, did. keep telling yourself that, motherfucker. You ain't quitting. I'm you a realist. Quit, I'm a realist. Who's to, people have quit smoking before. You're not going to quit smoking. You drink too much, etc. You're going to need cigarettes. I like how, look at your beer. It's like flowing upwards. You see that? It always does not. Does it? It looks cool. I was watching it yesterday out on the air. It's like, it's like a lava lamp. You just stare at it. All right, so what's the Remember problem the with lava that? lamps? What the fuck yeah. happened to those things? Long time. All right, I just told you what the problem was. It's what's not, the problem? It doesn't help Zaro by getting beat. It doesn't help him to beat Kingston down and then have someone come out and chase him off. Nobody's getting elevated, so why do it? I don't understand it. Yeah. I think Cesaro stands there in the background with his mouth shut while Heyman puts over Brock Lesnar, mm. and Cesaro looks like Daddy's second favorite son. Right. You right, know, right, it's just right. nothing's good about his baby face or baby face, his singles run. Not uh, right now, and he's got Heyman there too, which, which you makes thought was going to be better. Right. But right. coming out of that Real Americans, it was so painfully obvious, and I wrote about this in the column that Cesaro should have went baby face mm -hmm. with the swing and the fans loving him and all this and that. Swagger should have went heel. Now Swagger's gonna face face Rusev, mm -hmm. and he's the American baby face, and Cesaro's a heel. Yeah, well that's backwards. It is. And having Heyman with Cesaro should help, but if Heyman's just gonna put over Lesnar while Cesaro stands there like yesterday's newspaper, mm -hmm. it doesn't help him any either. 
They're really blowing Cesaro's push as a singles competitor, I think. Seems like it. Because after a while, fans give up and they stop caring. That's we'll the Dolph Ziggler syndrome, the Kofi Kingston right, syndrome. Right, right, right. Eventually, they just look at him, oh, he's the mid-card fucking, we shouldn't care we'll about see, guy. We'll see what they do in the uh, in the IC title battle royal. If they if they put the title on Cesaro... Uh, is that, that, kind is of that a good run. thing? To have well, the IC be, title? well, to put a title on him and then have Heyman come out and claim in promos, things like that, yeah. um, you know, this is... The guy that won the IC title, blah 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 blah. Which is the IC title mean, right? Well, now? especially because Wade Barrett was stripped, so he didn't even defeat, you know, exactly. Barrett clean. For and he didn't it, win so a match. He threw somebody over the top rope. If he wins, it's about royal. But uh, yeah, the IC title itself has right. no status to it anymore. Mm. So it's I don't know if it does any bad, but it doesn't do any good. Bo Dallas El Torito, uh, Bo Dallas retarded win here, man. Uh, one one funny thing. I mean, when Bo Dallas did his whole run around the, uh, the victory the ring on the yeah. outside, and poor little El Torito standing there, dude, and he bumps into him, nudges yeah. him with his leg, and the poor thing goes. I don't know. El Torito's got his tail back. Tail no, thrown back. back? I didn't tail thrown back. JBL referenced it okay. on, uh, on commentary. And then what the do you event, think, real quick, about uh, is Bo Dallas still over with you? Uh, last night I didn't like what they did last night. Um, but yeah, yeah I mean, he's still he's got still over with me, but it's still it's got going. This way, yeah. slowly, you know, not fast like downhill, but it's slowly. It was doing this, yeah, and now it's either peaked out, kind of leveled out, yeah, yeah, leveled out, or it's starting to slowly go down. Right, all right. Whereas I thought it was going to keep getting funnier and funnier and cooler and cooler. It's just, it is what it is. Now. What time is it? Uh, Nine thirty-one Eastern time. Let's do a radar check. Looks like we got. Oh, it's coming. It's coming. Probably about ten minutes from now. Let's say about ten minutes. Say about ten minutes. We have the main event of Monday Night Raw from last night. Happy birthday to you! I said happy birthday to you. Oh, one more time, I said happy birthday to you. No, I'm playing. I'm playing. All right, we had a uh, John Cena. And I Doc. say happy yes, birthday. Yes, sir. Day to me. We had. I'm not done yet. Happy <laughs> birthday. Good. We had uh, John Cena <laughs> and uh, Seth Rollins. Man, this went to a uh, that, no, good. a no contest. It was uh, Kane wound up coming out here, right? And uh, everybody, came thing, out everybody yeah. comes out. The show ended with uh, John Cena and Roman Reigns to kind of well, stare down. Well, you the whole Rollins coming out the cash in. Or no, not coming out. He was in the match, but cashing in, and then Ambrose came out and fucked him. He was, or, yeah, 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 Ambrose came out. He was about to yeah. cash in after it was over. Same thing as pretty much last week, kind except for Rollins ran out last match. week. Yeah. He wasn't in the match. But Kane came out and beat right. Cena down, I think, and then Rollins was going Kane to cash Kane comes in. out, beats down Cena. Rollins is about to cash in. That's where uh, Dean Ambrose comes out makes the save once again. Ambrose and Rollins fight up the ramp. And uh, it kind of left John Cena they, and Roman Cena and Reigns. Reigns clear out Kane or something, and then Cena right. and Reigns are by themselves, and they kind of stare each other down. Kind of a stare down. And then then they like raise a, each other's hands or something. It's kind of like mutual respect. All right, yeah. listen, these guys tried to take us out. We worked together to take them all out, yeah. and now mutual. The show goes off. Now that's there a with good a, rub. Cena giving Reigns. Right, the, right. Yeah, you're Reigns. on my level, kind of thing. So. I like when they do that, man. When when one guy, the guy in the opening segment is also in the ending segment, where you open know, the show, you had close the show. Roman Reigns opened the show, Roman Reigns closed the show. It was John Cena, Roman Reigns, you know, hands up in the air as Raw went off the air, and then uh, after it was over, they sent the crowd home happy with you know they teamed up and uh, took out. And just the with, with the Roman Reigns, the way they're booking him, it, it shows me that if they've got somebody that they want to make a star, they know how to do it. They can do it right. So when Daniel Bryan was fucking taken off like like a goddamn monster. Right. And they did everything in the world to try and keep him down. Try to squash him, right. If they would have actually did Roman Reigns style booking with him during that period. Oh, with Daniel? Oh, he would have been huge. I think he'd be a whole different story. I mean, there was potential for him right. to be like a Stone Cold Steve Austin kind of well, really bucking the system, the authority and all that, and the crowd support. And it, it was really like that kind of a feeling. It was. And they did everything they could to curb it and, and get rid of it, so... And then he got injured, and that's not going to help him out. That's not going to do nope. him any favors. And we'll see what happens. now when he comes back that they're going to book him like a mid-carder. Yeah, we'll see what happens. I mean, it's like you said, would, would Triple H coming off an injury or whatever, blah, 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 be on a kickoff show pre-show? Yeah, I know. It's would crazy. Bo Dallas be interrupting them? I know. You know, I know, it's like they don't look at him the way they look at their 
real well, tough Well, we'll guy. see the, the reaction that he gets when he returns, when he comes back. I mean, of course it's going to get that massive pop when he first yeah, returns. Yeah, absence makes the heart grow fonder. Right, right. Yeah. And then what happens after that? I mean, does the crowd continue to tell them that we want Daniel Bryan? Or well, have guys like Roman Reigns, Seth Rollins, and Dean Ambrose have well, been taken over? And and also, say, well, fans give up after a while. Like, right. they... they Go for it, go for it. This is our guy. This is our guy we want. And then they realize it doesn't matter. I mean, because God, it's been since fucking this time last year, pretty much. Yeah. So SummerSlam last year is when he got the belt from Cena, and then Triple H fucked him or whatever, right? Right. right. So there's been a year that they've been fucking making it clear. This is our guy. This is our guy. This is our guy. After a while, if he's not treated like the guy, they realize like, oh, doesn't matter how much we scream and shout and yell and chant and and cheer. Right. They're not gonna do it. So eventually, they give up, and you know. I, it'll be interesting to see what happens with the booking, man, when uh, when he comes back. For sure, man. For sure. Um, and like you said, it already doesn't look good by putting him with Bo Dallas on yeah. the uh, Money in the Bank pre-show. All right. Uh, so here's Boner. two, two stories. Boner. Oh, yeah. God. With the corny joke, too. All right. Here we go. So two stories we need to talk about. First of all, CM Punk. The latest on uh, CM Punk on that front is uh, AJ Lee recently came back yeah. obviously she's not pregnant um, the rumors the rumors that she was pregnant and we had clearly said that it was only a rumor and the guy that ah, broke, you're wrong the guy that broke that ah, story you're wrong was some uh, reddit is it reddit think, user yeah. reddit user who's a verified WWE insider he had put up a post on reddit as we put up on oh, our website, original pregnancy shit. saying yeah, yeah, that yeah, yeah. he had heard from somebody in WWE that AJ Lee was pregnant. He put that up. Now, he's had prior posts that have turned out to be true. Yeah. So, hence, he's a verified WWE insider <laughs> where this guy works for WWE or something like that. Yeah. They verified this guy. He put the news up. We put it up as a rumor and clearly said that we could not yeah, confirm According to this pregnant. guy. Yeah. According to the Reddit user, well, he turned out to be wrong. Clearly, she's not pregnant. Otherwise, they wouldn't have her back in and working in the ring. I don't care if she's one week pregnant. You're right. Now, see, I was pregnant. looking at just the physical part, like that she's not showing. Well, she could be pregnant and just not showing, but you're right. They wouldn't be right, right. putting her in the ring, whether she was one day pregnant or, or one year, they wouldn't, nine they wouldn't months, do. whatever. So pregnant. so she is uh, she is not pregnant and uh, is back full-time in WWE. But the stuff with Punk... Like, like you said, there's the the fact that AJ came back, right? The fact that his contract's up, fucking any day now, and the fact July that, uh, 17th. Okay, man. yeah, so like a mm -hmm. week or two, uh, and then the fact that I think he's the guy that featured on WrestleMania Rewind mm. tomorrow night or tonight tonight on the WWE Network. Uh, those three things all happening at the same time. I have people thinking like, oh, maybe he's coming back. Maybe he's resigning. He's not. He's not coming back. Um. There's been very little. I hope thought. I just jinx her. I hope we're wrong and we look I, stupid. I know. I, I would know. love to be wrong and look stupid on this one because I'm telling you, I can't put into words how much I miss that son of a bitch oh, he's, uh, on you know? TV every right. Week. I love CM Punk promos. I love CM Punk matches. I love that character. I think he was a breath of fresh air. He was the guy that Matt Boone, the biggest wrestling fucking freak of all time. Fell out of love with wrestling, was hot on this sweet new chick called MMA, completely dumped wrestling, didn't even want to talk to her, not even a quick fucking bang in the corner one night at a drunken party. They didn't want nothing to do with that bitch anymore. CM Punk does his pipe bomb, I'm back, I haven't left since. All right. Yeah, he no, got me back because he was so different and cool and... Right. Well, he told it like it was. I mean, they let him go out there and basically... He was uh, Attitude uh, work, Era in the current PG era. A work shoot type promo is what he, he would be able to cover, right? He was Attitude Era Absolutely. in the PG era, which right. made him stand out and just right. seem very different right. and cool and like what we... What we he's had... Um, why we love wrestling. He's had very little talks with WWE uh, ever since he walked out uh, a couple of months ago. Very little talks? How about none? Pr pretty much none. Yeah. Um, besides, you know, what... You know, and I, I'm sure that AJ Lee is basically the type that I'm staying out of it. I don't want to get involved. You guys, yeah, what you do with leave CM me Punk? Out of it. I'm a different person. Even, I'm, from I'm what I hear, they don't. He's CM Punk. You from guys, what I hear, they don't even they don't treat even her. Yeah, they don't even broach. Just it's not her business. They're not gonna fuck with her because of that. I Although don't her due to it, I could see in the future eventually they take some shots at her, or right, job right. her out in a certain way or whatever. But because, even 
Which even, is not fair at all, but it you is know, what it is. But AJ will be out there and she'll get CM Punk oh, chance. You know, I think it happened last night or the it week happens before. Every week, pretty you much. Know, yeah. Whenever she's on the microphone, CM Punk chance, and she just ignores it. But um, they're two completely different people. So the fact that AJ Lee's back in WWE, like we said, the fact that they're doing countdown special on the network, there's been there's many rewinds. Very yeah. little, if not no talks between CM Punk and WWE. No talks of him coming back. Contract expires on July 17th. What happens then? Um, I'm guessing that's that's it. You that's know, it. contracts the deal's expired, that's and that's it. The other thing, Sting today put up a photo on his Twitter account. Yeah. Uh, basically said July 14th, 2014, yeah. next Monday something was going down. Basically hyping a big announcement. Um, well, he there said are two was rooms. the date, right? I mean, he didn't the date, say anything. He put up a photo of a blurred out Sting. Did photo okay, of, I didn't of, see of, it. Okay. You know, it's him and his face paint. All right. Um, but there are two different theories. Uh, the first theory is the announcement has absolutely nothing to do with WWE. It doesn't. Nothing to do with WWE. Of course not. Uh, the other uh, rumor floating around, which we put up on the websites, is WWE 2K14 game uh, coming out. There's been talk that he may be added. 15. 15? What did I say, 14? Yeah. Uh, 2K15 game. There's been talk that he may be added as a special character, a downloadable, uh, downloadable character, or where you can buy a special version of the yeah, game. I don't even know what all that like downloadable doing, character stuff means. Is it like right. internet video games now, where you can download shit on you your? You can download game? updates. The updates come on out online, game? really, and then you can download them, and they I go right to your. Get back into uh, games. Yeah. We gotta get a system. I want that new UFC game. Yeah, yeah. It looks badass. Here's the deal with that, though. Let me let me say this, and we reported, you know, when the when the Sting rumors broke that you know he was either had signed with WWE or was about to sign with WWE, um, that there was talks that they were going to do a DVD on him. That there was talks that they were going to do a network special on him. That there was talks for the video game, talks for a Hall of Fame induction, and talks for a television appearance. Now well, they are doing the DVD. Well, they are doing the DVD. Yeah, and they've but done that's some just archive footage of his matches in WWE. Right, and they, they've done some network stuff with him where he's cut promos. He was on the he Warrior. He was interviewed for the Warrior for the stuff. Warrior stuff. Yeah. right. So he's been there with that. Um, now with the WWE 2K15 Warrior game, I mean, or uh, WWE 15 game. Let's not forget that when the Ultimate Warrior, it sounds to me like it's very similar to when the Ultimate Warrior had talks with WWE, where they were able to reach a deal for the video game, and what wound up happening? Warrior went to the Hall of Fame, he appeared on television, and then tragically passed away. It could be the same type of deal, and I'm not saying this it's is confirmed. It's different in a little bit. It's different in a little bit that Warrior used to be in WWE. No, it is different in the sense that Warrior was not talking to WWE at all at the time, and 2K4, 2K Sports wanted him in the game. They negotiated completely separate from WWE, just 2K Warrior. Right. And then when that deal was made by the approval of WWE, Warrior demanded an apology from Vince before he would agree to do anything. Vince wouldn't do it, whatever. Somehow they made it happen. But basically what I'm saying is the negotiations with 2K Sports and Warrior led to Warrior talking to WWE mm -hmm. and his eventual return. Right. Sting's already been talking to WWE. Sting's been talking to It's not like this video game is going to introduce the idea of him negotiating with WWE because he's already been negotiating with WWE. And from all intents and purposes, from all accounts, it's like he's very close to a well, deal. Well, that, that makes it even more realistic that we may see Sting on WWE television, yeah. where it could be a case of, you know, we work out a deal for the video game, then we'll do the Hall of Fame induction, and we'll have you appear on television. Very similar in a lot of ways, but okay. not in the same manner yeah. as, as Warrior and WWE, but with but Sting Sting's in also WWE. Do a match. There's a lot of different things. There's a lot of different things yeah. where Sting would come in and possibly mean, do a match. But yeah, I see it's, what you're saying. it's similar in, in more ways than one. Okay. Um is is what we'll we'll you know go with. Yeah. But uh you know a, a lot of everybody in WWE on both sides, on Sting and WWE, say that the deal is imminent. It's going to be done in the I, if it's not already done, and it may already be done. Who knows? Um, and it well, may be. We a would case, know if he signed it. No, I don't think we would. I think no, it may if he be put a case. the paper, we, we we would know. I think it may be a case of there's very few people. It's Sting, if Vince McMahon, and Triple H, and if it, the three of them that are doing the negotiations. It may be a, a tough deal where we are going to have a hard time finding out no, because when the deal is done. If they had signed him and he was officially on a contract, then they got to alert the media department to get ready no, you're to right. you're promote right. this. The uh, advertising or uh, the advertising department to promote this. The merchandising department get ready to start doing things. That's true. That's Somebody true. would leak that shit. 
Somebody would have it out. It would right. be in too many different departments. Too many so, different people would be aware of it. Unless it was, we just signed him and we're going to debut him in a week. Let's not even start the media. The, the, uh, we'll debut the him in the merchandise, afterwards. But he's not right. debuting anytime soon. Right, right, so right. if he signs a paper now and he's not debuting for a right. year... They would have all right. Merchandise, get ready to start doing this with Sting. Right, you right. Know, so th- those are the two rumors. I mean, are we going to see Sting on Raw next week? No. What? Ninety nine. Not. Na- never say never, but ninety nine point nine percent. Never. Never. We will never I say never. No, next week. Oh, next week. Never. Right. I think we'll see Raw. I think we'll see Sting on Raw eventually at some point. I, I hope so. I, I, I think so. I, I think so. even WrestleMania, if they do a Hall of Fame and then Raw the night after, something like that. Yeah. God, hopefully it's not Karma where they have Warrior and Don't you know, say Warrior that. at the Hall of Fame. And then, Why would you even you know, say that? I, hey, you, never, Jeez, you never know, man. Negative know. motherfucker. Uh, You're but, killing the guy already. No, come on, man. So, <coughs> um, but, but, you know, it's it's a case of everybody expects the deal to be completed sooner than later if it hasn't already been completed. But... Uh, this announcement next Monday, does it have to do with something completely non-wrestling related? I mean, the fact that Sting put up a photo, he's got his face paint on and everything else. They may announce a DVD. Was it was it his crow, black his and white, white? His white. Or was it his black and colorful? Colorful. The black and the white. Okay. Yeah, that could just be a video game. It could be a video game. Yeah. It could be uh, a DVD that they're going to announce, but I don't expect to see Sting on Raw next week. And no. I, all these marks oh. online are going to go, oh my God, he's plugging next Monday. That means it's a Monday and he's going to be on He Raw, knows what Raw, he's doing. He wants Raw, that. Raw airs on Monday and, and this announcement's on Monday. And yeah. it's gonna well, be whatever he's Sting's not gonna be whatever he's promoting, week. he must want it to get attention because he knew exactly what he was doing. Right. When he just put the date, which people would put two and together. Oh, that's Monday. Two together, Monday. Raw's on Raw, Monday, but it's, else, what, right. two weeks before Battleground, a B-level, right. C-level show. They're not. Not even the go-home show. Right. Why would he just pop up in his big debut after fucking it's, 20 years of never being in WWE? It'll his probably. His big debut is two weeks before Battleground. I'm, my, my guess, yeah. and we put this up on the website today, and there's been some some reports out there as as well. It's not just me guessing. Uh, some reports that it, that involves the uh, the two K fifteen video. That would make so sense. We'll have to wait and see what happens. We'll go. It could we'll be a fucking guys, India appearance. It could be anything. We'll keep you guys posted uh, throughout the uh, the coming days, um, yeah. leading into next Monday. Let you guys know what's up. Latest that we hear. We'll put it up on the website. Sting to uh, WWE DVD. Probably a DVD. Something with the network or the two uh, K video game. But Sting on Raw next week. I guess it's video game. Ninety nine percent. 99.9% no it's not yeah. going to be on Raw next week um, alright here we go got to get into rapid fire we got about 15 minutes then we'll get out of here before we do that let's do one quick check of the radar because I thought that Storm would be here by now and uh, Lance it's just kind of James slowed down a little bit did you get my Storm here first? it comes it's coming Lance Storm it's coming do you James hear thunder Storm? we don't hear any thunder is it rain I got the window open hmm well, anyways, all right, here we go. We need to get into rapid fire. If you guys haven't submitted your questions yet, you guys are a little bit too late. Here we go. I will read the first one from Jason Hansen. About time both you jobbers return to Tuesday nights. LOL. Tell me about it, man. We haven't been here the last couple oh, of weeks. Oh, that's days. right. Last week we were Wednesday or Thursday, right? Uh, we were Thursday last week, and the week before we weren't we here. Weren't here. All right, that's true. Uh, my question is MMA related today. With Machida fighting Weidman uh, out a bit too late, figuring, figuring Weidman. Weidman out a bit too late into the fight, is there anybody that you think can defeat Weidman in that division? Uh, Answer that one first. Uh, Jacare could do yeah. it. Um, one eighty-five. Who else is in one eighty-five? Jack Array comes to mind immediately. Vitor Belfort could be. Vitor. Him. Vitor's a beast. That's what I was going to say. But off TRT, maybe not. Probably not. Thunder. I heard that. Uh, that those two names come to mind right off the bat. I'd have to look at uh, some middleweights. But uh, yeah, those two names come to mind. By the way, Seamus Alberto Del Rio tore the house down on main event last man standing match. And Damian Sandow came out dressed as Shawn Michaels to confront Bret Hart and Chris Jericho on the highlight reel segment. Awesome stuff on main event tonight. I'm going to have to download that. We that missed it. Funny. I want to check that out too, that sounds man. sounds funny. All right, what do we got from Anthony, Anthony Remy? Remy says no, first. And, and you son of a bitches that didn't wish Matt Boone a happy birthday, you're all pieces of shit. I, I, one of you. I appreciate the people who didn't. 
I fucking hate attention, fake, phony attention. Can't believe you guys. I don't like Unbelievable. It. Anthony Remy says first, happy birthday, Matt Boone. Second, my twenty first birthday is this Thursday. Can y'all wish me a happy birthday? Anthony, Anthony Remy. Anthony Remy, happy birthday, man. Twenty one. Loyal, loyal diehard member. Twenty one years 21. old. One. Oh, son of a bitch. I will drink I to that. It up, man. Happy birthday, Anthony Remy. Uh Teresa Baker. Happy birthday, Maddie. What smiley face is that? A little kissy face? Maddie. She called you Maddie. That's what she every girl in Maddie. the world calls me. Happy birthday, Maddie. You, you gotta go up there. That was, that was cute, Teresa. That was cute. Every girl says Maddie. Maddie? Yes. It's my sister calls me Maddie. Oh, she's gonna call you Boone. Steven Grabeik says, Do you think Cesaro is being ruined by being a heel? I think he's much better as a baby face. Well, he's never been a baby face, so it's hard to say. But he was getting over as a baby face. And Steven... Uh, if you want to know my thoughts, I have a whole fucking two-page column at eWrestlingNews.com on that exact subject. So. Steven Grabeik, die-hard loyal WZR Army member. But it can't be Grabeik, it's Grabeik. No happy birthday. Grabeik? Unbelievable. How do you say G-R-B-A-V-A-C? Grabeik. Matt Johnson. I don't know. About Reigns, he's improved a lot since his FCW NXT days. Also, I was very impressed with how he improvised his promo on Raw. Uh, he's seen a couple, a, he's he's seen a couple sucks thing. Right. Yeah, when I'm around, of course Cena sucks. He was yeah. getting his point across and got barraged with Cena sucks chance. He improvised that, connected with the crowd, and replied with when Roman Reigns in the house, you damn right Cena sucks. Yeah. Right. Um to give him time, he's uh like a sponge still learning. But to my question, what's the possibility of Roman Reigns versus Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania? Very it's good. the current plan right now. Um, well, it's it the plan, but it's it's a, one of the ideas that's floating around. One of the ideas. Yeah. One of the ideas. Now, what, what will the landscape be like when WrestleMania rolls around in a fucking year from now? You never know. You never know. I mean, you're so far away from WrestleMania. But usually, right around now, next month, they start to try and map it out. And they never right. actually stay on course, but they try and come up with a rough idea of at least the main... Some sort of draft, right. The main match that they want to build to. So they start elevating guys to get them, you know, in position. Tom Nelson says, Hey guys, how come WWE didn't address Santino Marrella last night? We haven't talked about that. Santino was, uh, he was backstage last night. Basically <coughs> well, what happened is, uh, in Toronto on yeah. Sunday night, WWE live event. Santino, in character... Uh, I never watched and, the video. Uh, was it good? He was in character. He basically said that uh, you know this. He recently, well, see, I heard he thought he was thinking about retirement. Was recent, what he said. Recently, so he didn't officially retire yet. No, but WWE.com put it up yeah. and basically said Santino yeah. reveals shocking news about his in-ring future. Um, but announced that he was retiring. Third neck injury. Ooh, hear that rain? Third neck injury, and uh, you know was going to basically have to hang it up. As far as in ring career is yeah. uh, concerned, basically, I mean, Santino he's recently opened. 40, right? He's getting up there, right? Yeah. I think so. He opened a uh, MMA pro wrestling school up in Canada. Um, so he's got a side gig. He's invested a lot of time, a lot of money into that uh, wrestling and MMA school. So It was an MMA school. MMA and wrestling, I believe. Was there wrestling too? I know it's MMA. A bit of I know he's got an MMA gym in Canada. I don't right. know if it's wrestling. Too. But anyways, um, so he's got, you know, he's been making <laughs> alternative plans um, for his post WWE career. If you run a gym, um, you're gonna make money. Oh yeah, especially in a, in a populated area. Oh, I saw that. There we go. Um, huh? What the fuck was I gonna say? Oh, the Santino thing. I wrote a column about that. Hey, Jake, e wrestling news. I'm gonna make fun of the title. I won't even say it, but e wrestling news. Com. Check it out. You remember the title? Thanks for the Thank you for the memory, Santino. Thanks for the laughs. Thanks for the laughs, Santino. Santino yeah. All right, here we go. Um, hey, Scott Brown says, with... Take two. Oh, this is yours. Okay, go ahead. Take two. With the Ambrose and Rollins feud, thoughts of doing a ladder match or TLC with a briefcase on the line. Have they ever had a guy win the briefcase and defend the I, briefcase? I was before? wondering that. I know we've talked about that they might do it or they should do it or what if they did it, but have they ever done it? I don't remember. I, I, I want to say they have, but I can't remember who it was. Yeah, I, me neither. Probably haven't. They probably But uh, I like the idea, sure. Um, where we leave off, Christopher Brown, happy birthday, Boone! A visit to Hooters at some point tomorrow should be a mandatory, no? 
I'll go to Hooters. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, LOL, anyways, while I was on Twitter earlier this afternoon, I noticed a post from Jericho asking fans to submit ideas for future opponents since his feud with once Bray his feud. once his feud with Bray was over. I suggested he work with Rollins and wanted both yours and Ryan's thoughts on this subject. I would say Jericho versus Rollins. I love that idea. That would be a great I idea. I fucking love it. Or him and Ambrose in the mic. Microphone uh, and rain ring. Oh, yeah. man. Awesome. Uh, but the idea of Jericho Rollins in the ring, fucking forget about it. That yeah. matches your potential That's just on sick, paper. Sick match. Yeah. Nilsa, Nilsa Hernandez, happy B-Day, Matt. Happy B-Day, Matt. Happy you. birthday to you. I said happy birthday to you. Lance Winter, happy birthday, Boone. So, Cena wouldn't put over Braze, so they went out and got Y2J <laughs> to do it. And if your AC issue... Is as cold as isn't it. as cold as it was. Change or clean the filter. Yeah. Good idea. Or it could be frozen up. I had an old air conditioner that would freeze up and literally turn into ice, and the ice would like a refrigerator, you know, oh, really? or a freezer. Yeah. And you'd have to turn it off, put it outside, and let it melt. Let it melt down. Yeah. yeah. It would freeze up. We'll look into that. Brandon Scott Brown says thoughts of putting Monday Night Nitro on the network. Oh man, they don't have Nitro on the network. I don't think they do yet. They no, don't put WCW no, shows on not yet. I not thought yet. they did. No, there's no Nitro. Okay, definitely. I know no they Nitro. put the Clash of the Champions up recently. Not yet. Saturday Night's main event. But uh, yeah, Nitro. That's it. I don't know why they wouldn't. Who's up next? We got Brandon Scott Brown. Thoughts or uh, we've got a uh, Artemio Alvera Tyson Kidd versus Jericho. I think would be a great match. No doubt. Tyson Kidd. Great. It's not gonna match. happen. But by the way. Tyson Kidd came back uh, last night on Superstars, working match on uh, Superstars. Yeah, and Natalia was in his corner too, so I, right. said, I guess they're acknowledging right. that they're married. And on yeah, they they've Aaron done Rock. an angle in uh, NXT with the two of them as well. Okay. Um, so, so what happens? Uh, he's got another one. Happy B Day, Matt Boone. Happy B Day, Matt Boone. David Hadley, Hadley, Hadley. When will all of the WWE library finally be on the WWE Network? Like episodes of Sunday Night Heat, Velocity, EC Dub on Sci Fi, EC Dub on TNN, Nitro. And thunder. I think it's gonna be a while. I and you well, know what I hear it. It's not as simple as just uploading it or something scared, and boom, right. it play. It's like they have to roll it off the, the tape. They have to edit it. I don't know why, but it, technically speaking, they I, do. And yeah, it's not as quick as just doing it. it, 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 it from what I hear, it actually takes a long time to roll that footage off and make it digital. Yeah. To put on the network. And they've added a lot of content already. I like the idea yeah, of a the, slow build. But the they question of the entire point. library, I saw that. Ooh. The entire library is going to be years. I mean, yeah, they've got it. Yeah. hundreds got of thousands so much of hours, I believe. Right. I mean, they've only right. got, what, 2,000 hours up right now? Yeah. And they've got yeah. like 200, 400,000 yeah. hours with all the different libraries. I don't know the exact number, but it's insane. Amount. I mean, that's that's cool. You can add that, but they need original content like that reality is shows what they and need. things like that. People are not buying to watch WCCW TV from 1983. No, they're not. You know, not. No, not one they're subscription not. has been purchased. For that. For that, right. Yeah. David Hadley's got one more, man. And he says, do you think WWE missed an opportunity to really make an instant star at Money in the Bank instead of staying in their John Cena comfort zone? Uh, what instant star would he be talking about? Reigns? I think they're making stars right now. I think, you know, you don't make a star overnight. Yeah. Um, you know, it's a... It's a, it's a, a I think build. his thought process was if Reigns would have won the match, he would have been the champion... You know, the three, the one of three undisputed champions since they unified yeah. the belts. It would have been an instant star making night, but it wouldn't have. And yeah. like we said with Daniel Bryan, WrestleMania is the day to do it. If you're going to make a guy and put the stamp and say he's our guy now, you do it at WrestleMania if you can, right. you know. Uh, Vincent Nugent, happy birthday, happy 30th birthday for tomorrow, Matt. I hope you enjoy it, buddy. Thank you. Uh, what did you guys think of the entire UFC 175 event? Talked about that earlier in uh, our numeral one. And Both would either of you good. read that question? Would either of you take Ronda Rousey in 16 seconds? No, take on Ronda Rousey. Oh, in 16 take on? Seconds. Uh, as in like in bed or as in a fight? It like would, take on? Both would probably last 16 seconds. To be honest. Yeah. She would kick my ass in 16 seconds. That's hot chick. And man. I would nut in 16 Woo. seconds. About as quick as that lightning. Yeah. Was there. Just Rousey's just a hot chick, <laughs> man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> What do we got next from my uh, Jim Nicholson? Happy birthday, boom! Thank you. Paul Velasquez says Johnny Russo is a guy on the WWE creative team. New re new report came out that he insisted they use his name in Miz's segment. Don't jump to conclusions. Thought I'd let you know, and happy B-Day, boom. 
I haven't heard that. I, I trust Paul Velasquez, so that makes sense. And and uh, the source that said the Vince Russo thing seemed to be just assuming it. Yeah. It wasn't like yeah. they knew or were told. It was like they just assumed, oh, Johnny Russo, Russo, Vince Russo. Could be. Yeah. Could be. Uh, thunder and lightning out yes, there. It's there's your star good. finally looking coming. Good. Jose Liza. Liza, do you think people will go ape? When the new Planet of the Apes comes out, LOL. I've never seen Planet of the Apes. Neither. Well, people go ape? It's Planet of the Apes, so yeah, people are going to go ape. Where the hell did that come from? I don't know. David Hadley's back. He says, if WWE is supposed to be cutting production costs, why do they continue to use pyro for main events? I mean, they've already got it there for SmackDown. What's their pyro for? Uh, uh, that's I don't true. watch that's it, but if they, it's already there for SmackDown. I don't know how much it costs to... Hit it once or twice more. They may cut that back in the coming weeks. We'll have to wait and see. The uh, the budget cuts are ongoing. They want twenty million. Twenty Vince, was the Vince number. Yeah. We had said cut. last week that it was tens of millions. We didn't know the figure. Right, right. Oh. And then we heard last week that it was twenty million was the number. What do we got? Paul Velasquez uh, responding to somebody else. Vincent Nugent, do you guys think it was a good idea to put the TNA Television Championship officially as inactive? It was a title that really was kind of lost in the uh, in the shuffle anyways. Um, you know, Abyss was the last champion, yeah. as you said. You never get that where you can't swallow sometimes? You always get heartburn and... and Not heartburn, things, but just now I was trying to swallow. Yeah. Mm. I couldn't get the swallow down. Um, Jose Lisa responded to somebody else. Uh, Paul Blaska, same thing. And last one from Vincent Nugent. Oh, this is a good one. What do you think about Renee Young, WWE Superstars? She's going to be a commentator... For WWE superstars on a weekly basis, first female commentator. Um, I think it's awesome, dude. She she's knows good. her history. Um, yeah, she's good. She studied WWE. She's very good. She's good. Yeah. She knows her history. Blah 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 blah. But she's good. Yeah. Period. Like she's a good broadcaster. Great broadcaster, I'd say. She's gonna. She be might good. be the best broadcaster in the company right now. Backstage interviewer. Best backstage WWE interviewer by far. Best right. host of panel. Best host. Right. By far, as far as play by play, I haven't heard her do it yet. Yeah. Uh, and it's a whole different ball game doing play by play versus hosting and interviewing backstage. It's a whole different ball game. Right. But uh, Superstars is a great place to start her out. If it works, you can elevate her. You know, main Absolutely. event, SmackDown, Raw. And uh, yeah, I like it. I think she's perfect for that role. I agree. I agree one hundred percent, brother. That is a Tuesday night. All right. WZR TV. One more time in the chat room. Come by quick. My man, we're doing a birthday celebration. We're gonna we're gonna do a cube steak tomorrow. We're gonna do some cheese and potatoes, drink some beers tomorrow. Yes. And uh I'd like to get some weed too, to be honest with you. Want some weed? I'd like to smoke a little weed. Get you some weed tomorrow. Birthday ganja. I'm get you some weed tomorrow. You want some ganja? Birthday ganja. A bit of the herb. Yeah. Instead of a cake, give me some weed. Cake. Yeah. All right. Stick the candle. Or make like weed Stick brownies the and the put a candle in there. You know, something whatever. like that, right? <laughs> Anyways, we're going to take care of you, man. Maybe hang out at the pool for a little bit tomorrow. It's supposed to be a beautiful day tomorrow, man. Uh, this is, the, is it the, no storm tomorrow? This is the uh, cold front coming through right now. So, the so we go from a fucking tornado that you say might wipe us out tonight yeah. to a sunny, cloud-free day tomorrow. Right now, right now, the cold front is coming through. Once the front goes past, which is that line of storms... But what about the dew saw. point or the NSW? The, point, or the, the humidity and everything is dropping tomorrow. <laughs> it's going to be a perfect day with a light breeze. No dew point? About 80 degrees, no high humidity. Dew points in the in the fifties tomorrow. What uh, about mountain 50s. dew points? Is there going to nope. be any we are citrus? Good. Tomorrow is going to be a beautiful day. All for right, your birthday. So maybe we'll uh, we'll cool. hit up the pool for a little bit. It is crazy lightning out there. Boone will verify that. For it's me, man, it's lightning. The pretty, pretty light pretty is crazy. glowingly blue every few Boone. seconds. Everybody in the chat room, happy birthday! Thank you, Boone. thank you, thank you to everybody. All right, brother. Uh, Appreciate turns it. Turns thirty tomorrow. Feedback. Uh, feedback. Um, Facebook.com slash MattBoomWZR. Facebook.com slash Ryan Clark WZR. We're both going to put up a feedback post on our Facebook page. Just go there. We want to hear what you guys think. What you think about the show? Was it good? Was it bad? This is your thing. I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah. Uh, uh, and the archive will be up tomorrow. Archive it is every tomorrow. week. Uh, right. YouTube.com slash user. Actually, you don't even need to do slash users. YouTube.com slash WZR archive. Correct. Uh, and then it'll get you there. It's a great page. Daniel Humphreys. I want to send a shout out to him. He does a He's great, awesome. great he job a great on it. Great job. He really decks it out nice. Yep. Uh, he makes it available on video for us on YouTube. 
video. And he puts a little MP3 link in the description. Oh, so you can download it? So you can iPod it. it and, nice. you know, yeah. Um, so iPod, got is that the right word? Is that the audio? iPod and all that stuff. Okay, yeah, right, yeah, yeah. Right. Um, so that'll do it, man. Hey, listen. 30 tomorrow, brother. Fucking old man, man. And my best friend, my roommate, 10 plus years. Thank you. It's my boy, man. So happy birthday to you. And uh, we will see you guys next Tuesday night, 8 to 10 Eastern Time. WZRonline.com for Matt Moon. That's me. Ryan Clark. That's him. And see you next Tuesday night, 8 to 10 Eastern Time. WZRonline.com. Happy birthday, brother.